like you other religions that it. teach? Like, what about Jesus like Jews or Muslims if they are against similar things? Mm. Well, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, yeah. No man comes to the Father but by me. Right. Jesus declared himself to be the Son of Man, the Son of God, Accepting so did his followers. And, all and so all it's, it's, it's very clear in Scripture that if you don't believe who he is, who he says he is, mm -hmm. you have no salvation because he's the only way. In the Quran, it says God has no son, right? Muslims believe that Jesus was switched on the cross by somebody else and really didn't get crucified. That's the foundation of faith in Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is the foundation of our faith. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, students. We come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to give you a message of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, one of which most people hate. They hate the truth of God's word, but we're here to tell it to you that your souls might be saved. God is offering you a message of salvation that's been declared for 2,000 years all over the world. And it's still written in the Word of God in the Bible. If you open it up and you read the Gospel according to John, it tells you of what happened to Jesus Christ, how he came as God, God became a man and walked the earth, did miracles and signs and wonders to prove who he was. He was persecuted by his own people and by Gentile unbelievers, crucified on a cross according to secular history all for an atonement for your sin. And God gives every man and woman an opportunity to repent. And that's the message that Jesus preached. Repentance from sin and faith towards God in Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about this in John chapter 3, that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him would be saved, would not be condemned, but be saved. And a lot of people take that scripture and say, I believe in Jesus, but I'm still a sinner. I'm going to continue sinning, and God just loves me so much, he's going to let me into his kingdom. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible also says in John chapter 3, for this is the condemnation that is in the world. That light has come into the world, which is Jesus Christ, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And when we go out to share the gospel, whether in college campuses, concerts, festivals, city street corners, we always hear the same thing, hatred towards God's word and fake Christians that say they're Christians and walk in sin. But see, this is what God has done. He's given us an opportunity to be cleansed from sin. The fact, but the, the question is, do you want to be free from sin? And what is sin? The very thing that is hindering you from having a right relationship with the God who created you in your mother's womb, with the God who gave you your soul. 
with the God who gives you life and breath, with the God who promises good things for you. It's your sin that is separating you from a right relationship with him. The Bible says that sin is the transgression of the law, God's moral law. Basically, if God said don't do it, then you shouldn't do it. For example, Jesus said, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. And so, when you have sex outside of marriage, when you look lustfully upon your fellow man or fellow woman, this is a sin in the eyes of God, worthy of judgment and death. When the Bible says in Matthew 19 that God, Jesus Christ, defines marriage between a man and a woman, when the Bible says that homosexuals and sodomites and liars and drunkards and thieves will not have any part in the kingdom of God, it's because it's a sin. It's because it's a sin. And God is commanding you to turn from those sins and turn to the living God through Jesus Christ. This is God's will for you. It's not only God's will for you, it would behoove us to listen to it, to turn. Folks, the devil has been very busy throughout history painting a wrong picture of what Christianity is and what following Jesus is. And you have believed a lie. You believed a lie. Maybe you think God accepts everybody. Maybe you think no matter what kind of sinner you are, if you continue in your sin and you die in your sin, that you're going to be okay with God because he loves you so much. Wrong. That is not what the Bible says. Yes, God does love sinners, but he commands sinners to repent of their sin or they're going to perish. They're going to perish. So if you're walking in sin, God is commanding you to repent. And repentance is basically this, a mind change for the good, which leads to an action of fervently and heartily amending your wicked ways, the wicked ways that have separated you from God. And yes, there is a God. Contrary to what you may believe, there is a God. He's a living God who created all things, and including your soul. Yes, you have a soul. There's one God who is in three persons according to the Bible, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches this one God you're going to die and stand before at the day of judgment. As the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. And so regardless of what you believe right now, you may say there is no God. You may say we came from a primordial soup, which eventually led to different organisms leading to a monkey to a man. You might believe that nonsense. You might have faith in that, but it doesn't make it true because God still created you, even though you may reject him. You may believe that when you die, you cease to exist and nothing happens. You may believe that, but the truth is still the truth, that one day you're gonna stand before this God that you may have rejected, and you're gonna give an account for your life. And that's the truth, whether you believe it or not. And so God, out of his great mercy and love, out of his great compassion, he sent Jesus Christ into the world to die on a cross while you walk by and don't pay any mind. Listen, students, if I had a million dollars right now and I showed it to you and I said, the first person who comes up to me will get this million dollars, all you students would run up to me right now, right now, and beg me to have that money. But I get, yeah, what's up? Question. Mm -hmm. How stupid do you think the students at Georgia Tech are? What do you mean stupid? How fucking dumb do you think they are to fall for your bullshit, man? I don't know if you're just a dipshit or a con man, but so, no one here is dumb enough. So if it's stupid, why are you here? Hating on it. Because you're spreading hate. And you know the What's, worst part about actually, it Actually, you're the one cursing at us and getting angry. Yeah. That's hate. Sure. This is fucking stupid. So who's spreading the hate? Me or you? The worst part about this is that there are good Christians out there that want to t promote tolerance and promote What's decency. tolerance? And you are painting a bad image for Christians everywhere. Are you a Christian? I was. Oh, you were? So, Before so who I are you to come? Church with people like you. Who, who are you? Actually, your sin drew you away from the church. So, who are you to tell me what's Fuck right you, or wrong? Man. See, look at the hater. See, this is the hypocrisy of sinners right here. Sinners like this man that says we spread hate, 
but yet he comes up angry, cursing at me and telling me F you, which I would never do to you. We come here with a message of salvation and you love your sin. That's the problem. You love your sin. See, the love of the world preaches tolerance, right? No matter who you are, no matter what you are in your sin, God is going to receive you into his kingdom no matter what kind of sinner you are. If you're a homosexual, transgender, God's not going to punish you. Tolerance. That's not love. That's not love because it's not the truth. See, the truth is, is God is going to punish sinners. Whether you like it or not, whether you call it hateful or not, that's your problem. But that's the truth. It's the epitome of love for someone to come out here and tell you the truth about what's coming so that you wouldn't go there, so that you could be free from your sin. That's love. But yet the same people who preach tolerance hate me and the message of the gospel. They've done violence to me in the past. The same people that get angry at the message of the gospel and they say they love and they're full of tolerance and we're the haters, they're hypocrites. Hypocrites. And that's the problem with sinners. Sinners say, don't judge, yet they judge all the time. Sinners say, you're hateful, be tolerant, yet they're intolerant bigots against the word of God. You see? Don't be a hypocrite, students. Don't be a hypocrite. Find the truth in the Word of God. You see? Jesus wants to save you. It's a message of love. It's not your love. It's not the love of the world, which is emotional and carnal. It's real love, truth. The Bible says that love or charity does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. So real love wants the best for a person. And the best for a person is not always their happiness. It's not always happiness. You see, just let everybody be happy. Let them do what they want, even if it destroys themselves. Let the drug dealer continue to shoot up on heroin because it makes them happy. Let the homosexual continue in their homosexual behavior even though the average death rate of a homosexual is much lower and suicide rate much higher than an average person. Let the transgender be like they are. Let them believe they're a woman even though they're a man or a man even though they're a woman because it makes them happy. That's not love, folks. That's not love. That's like a doctor saying this. Yes, you have a tumor and you're happy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut you open and get this tumor out because you're happy without surgery. I'm just gonna let you be how you are. That's how it is in the spirit. When you sit there and you say you're tolerant for people that are on their way to hell. That's not love. Love tells people and warns people and tells them, hey, your sin is leading you to hell. This is how you can get out of it. Turn to Jesus Christ and live. No matter how you take the message, that's your problem. I'm telling you the message straight from the word of God. The Bible says that sinners will not enter the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, I'll read it. 1 Corinthians 6, starting in verse 9, says, Don't you know, know ye not, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And if you do not inherit the kingdom of God, where do you think you're going to go? You're not going to cease to exist when you die in this body. You're not just going to cease to exist. You have a soul that God has given you that's eternal. And that soul is going to go somewhere forever, either to be with God in the kingdom of heaven or to burn in the lake of fire for eternity. And so that's why we're here, because we don't want you to burn for eternity. We want you to know Jesus, the one who loves you, the one who wants to save you from your sin. Why you continue to walk and mock and be in pride in your own intelligence. Folks, your degree is not going to save you. Your money, your job, your intelligence, none of it's going to save you when you die. None of it. The only thing that's going to save you is Christ Jesus. It says, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Be not deceived. You see, right now a lot of you are deceived by the logic of the world. You're deceived by, your, by what professors would call education. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. But nevertheless, you're deceived to believe that you're not going to account to God 
for your life. You're deceived to believe that there is no God and that Jesus can't save you. But it says here, you shall, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators. Fornicators are those that have sex outside of marriage, regardless if you're gay or straight. If you have sex outside of a godly marriage, which Jesus defines in Matthew 19, 4, as between a man and a woman. And it says in Matthew 19, 4, that God created them male and female from the beginning. So there's, it's only binary. There's only two genders. And those two genders were meant to marry each other according to Jesus in Matthew 9, 19. And if you're a fornicator like I used to be, then you will not inherit the kingdom of God. God is calling you to repent and turn from your fornication and believe on the gospel of Jesus Christ and then get baptized and follow Jesus by the power of the Spirit. Be not deceived, nor idolaters. Idolaters are those that believe in another God other than the true God, that bow down and worship not only idols, but also your own life. You can make yourself an idol. You can make your job an idol. You can make your money an idol. You can live for money. You can live for power. You can live for influence. You can live for sex. You can live for your partner. You can live for a lot of things. Anything that exalts itself over God, the true God in the Bible, is an idol in your life, and idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, nor adulterers. Adulterers are those that look upon your fellow mankind with lust, wanting to sleep with them. Those that are married and commit adultery, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says. Nor effeminate. Effeminate are people that submit themselves to homosexual acts. Men that want to be women, the Bible says they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And if you do not inherit the kingdom of God, you go to the lake of fire. But there's hope for you in Christ Jesus. As long as you have breath in your lungs, you have a chance to repent of your sin, of effeminate behavior, sodomite behavior, and turn to Jesus. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. These are homosexuals in the Bible. These are, in the Greek word, it talks about homosexuality. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's not love to tell a homosexual that they'll be okay, even though you think you're loving them, even though you think you're tolerating and doing a good work. That's not love. It's not love to pat somebody on their back in sin and tell them they're okay because when they die, their blood will be on your hands. They'll stand before God and be cast in the lake of fire and they'll wonder, why didn't anybody tell me? Why didn't anybody tell me this was a sin? I'm telling you now, I'm preaching, sir. I'm telling you now that homosexuality is a sin in the Old and New Testament and Jesus defined marriage between a male and a female. The Bible says, do not be deceived you will not inherit the kingdom of God, so turn and believe in Jesus Christ. I'm preaching as soon as I'm done. Nor thieves, nor thieves. Thieves are those that like to steal. I'll answer your questions in one minute, in a few minutes, actually. Sorry, man. I'm, I'm preaching right now. Preaching. Thieves, those that... You can talk to him. You can talk to him. Hey, brother. Thieves, those that like to steal. Those that like to take things that's not theirs, praise God. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. God wants you to repent and turn to him with all your heart so that you can be free from being a thief. What else? Do not be deceived. The covetous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Covetous people are those that are never content with what they have. They always want more. They always want bigger. They always want better. They compare themselves with others and they covet wives. They covet material goods. Even the richest man in the world, they want more and more. This is a plague of the human spirit. And God says in the Bible, the covetous will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Repent and be born again. Folks, do not be deceived. The Bible says drunkards nor drunkards. Drunkards, those that like to get drunk or high or, or their, their, their minds are impaired by, by drugs or alcohol. The Bible says drunkards 
will not inherit the kingdom of God, folks. So if you're a drunkard, God loves you enough to tell you to repent. God has sent his preachers out to tell you to turn from these things. He wants to give you a better life in the spirit and an eternal hope of salvation in Christ Jesus. Drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Then it says, nor revilers, those that revile, that think evil and do evil acts against other people, hateful, bigoted people that hate others and they revile them and they want to kill them. These revilers will not enter the kingdom of heaven. If you are a reviler, if you hate people, doesn't even matter if they're your enemies. I don't even hate my worst enemy. I've been knocked out before. I've had my sign burned. I've been spit on. I've been mocked. I've been cursed. I've been threatened so many times. And I would never hate the person who did that to me. Folks, a reviler will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Nor extortioners. Extortioners are people that take advantage of others to get what they want whether it be money, whether it be influence or power, if you're being a, an extortioner will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And such were some of you, Paul says, Paul writes. Some of us used to be these things. I was a fornicator. I was an adulterer. I was a liar. I was a thief. I was wicked and covetous. I used to curse and I was a hip hop artist and a DJ, a drunkard. I used to throw parties and DJ parties, all these things in college. But Jesus Christ showed me where I was heading, just like he's trying to show you now, that your life is more precious than these things out here in the world that the devil is trying to get you entangled in. Your life is worth more than your degree. Your life is worth more than money. Your life is worth more than the sin you love to commit or the false gods that you believe in. There's no God in the face, face of faith all over the planet, all throughout history that came down to be a man to die on a cross for you, to die on a cross for you that you might be set free. There's none other but Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God's son, no man comes to the Father but by him. Many people say God has no son because they're liars and that the truth is not in them. In fact, the Bible's very clear. The Bible's very clear from those that walked with Jesus that he, he professed to be the son of the living God. And he proved it by rising again the third day. By rising again the third day after being crucified and shedding his blood as an atonement for your sin. The historical Jesus existed. The historical Jesus existed. He was crucified. His followers were called Christians, followers of Christus. Jesus Christ did live. He did do miracles. And he, and he died on a cross and shed his blood for you so that you could be justified, you could be cleansed, you could be sanctified. Don't you understand, folks, how great a salvation is waiting for you? How great a salvation is waiting for you, folks? When you die, you don't cease to exist. No, you have a soul that God has given you that's going to give an account one day for the deeds done in the body, as scripture testifies, for the deeds done in the body. Yes, some of you may walk around in pride, thinking these things are foolishness, foolishness to your ears. And the Bible says this would happen, that the message of the cross is foolishness to some. But you know what? That thing that you think is foolish is the very thing that'll save you. You may have a wrong idea of what Christianity is, because of false Christians throughout history doing atrocities. People that claim to be followers of Jesus doing wicked things, showing that they really, aren't, they really weren't Christians according to Jesus. You see, Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. How can an evil tree produce good fruit? What's up, man? God bless you. You too. Thank you for oh, God bless you. I really appreciate it. What's your name? Ramon. I'm Adam. Nice to meet you. Take care, bro. Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. So if a man or a woman comes along claiming to be a Christian and they're a murderer and they're cursing out of their mouth and they're committing fornication, back in time there were so-called Christians that agreed with slavery and were putting people in bondage. 
They're showing themselves that they weren't Christians. There was even people that call themselves Christians involved in the Holocaust. But Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. Do not be deceived, folks. These are not born again believers. The true Christians were fighting against these injustices. During the Holocaust, there were Christians that were hiding Jews so that they wouldn't, they wouldn't get caught by the Nazis. And they themselves went to be a part of the Holocaust. During the slave days, there were real Christians on the Underground Railroad trying to get slaves, runaway slaves to the north so they could be free. Abolitionists, you see? But what is the mainstream view of Christianity? Yes, bigoted, white, racist, I know, I know, because people have a wrong image of what Christianity is. Folks, do not be deceived. If you wanna know what it's like to follow Jesus and who Jesus is, open the Bible. Open his testimony in, in the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. If you wanna know who Jesus is, cry out to him. Ask him to reveal himself in you and read his word. Don't listen to liars. Listen to the word of God. You see? Don't listen to people that say God has no son or Jesus is Michael the archangel or Jesus is the brother of Lucifer. There's a lot of people that proclaim a different Jesus than what's found in truth. Don't believe them. Don't believe people that say that you came from monkeys or animals or whatever they promote in false Darwinian macroevolution that's never been proven. God is an intelligent designer. And when you look at the DNA of a man, when you look at life, when you look at the way things are, you look at it and you cannot deny that something or somebody intelligently designed all things, that these things couldn't possibly happen by random chance and billions of years. No, because an intelligent designer designed you. Fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. And his creation testifies of this fact that God did create all things, that he formed you in your mother's womb. He gave you an eternal soul, an eternal spirit to worship and praise him. But instead, if you were like me in college, and you may be the same way now, instead you choose to reject God, reject his ways, and you do what makes you feel good. You believe in what makes you feel happy. You do the things in the flesh that you think are right and good, even though they're condemning your soul. If sex feels good to you outside of marriage, you do it, not even knowing that your soul is in danger. If smoking weed and doing drugs and, and, and getting drunk feels good to your flesh, then you do it, not even realizing that your soul is in danger. If being a homosexual or transgender or, or if you're a racist and you hate other people, if these things feel good to you and you're doing them, not even knowing your soul's in danger, God is calling you to repentance. God wants to save you through Jesus Christ. Do not be deceived, folks. Even though heaven comes down, we don't go to where God is at right now. Heaven is, that's going to be the new Jerusalem on earth, but that's a different, that is a different conversation. Okay. But have you read Revelation chapter 20 verse 25? Uh, I've read uh, Re Re Revelations quite a bit. I couldn't cite it to you verse for verse. But if we went there, I'm sure I'd be familiar with it. If yeah. you have the scripture, you can pull it out. Sure this do. Is, uh, this is a pretty neat scripture. Three and four. What does it say? Well, you got to go back to verse one first. That's fine. You can't just take three and four. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is of the devil, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Okay, go ahead, three and four. Well, that was three. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of men that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And for the word of God, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So what's your point? What's your point? What, what Bible um, translation are you using? King James. King James. Give me one second. So I do that. Hey, bro. God bless you. Good boy. 
Lord led me over where you guys were at. I parked. I had no idea. Oh, you yeah. You guys' phones were probably off or whatever. And I was like, you yeah, know, I was just preaching a little. I'm just taking a break because I don't have yeah, an amp. Uh, I don't oh. think you read the right scripture, sir. You I, said Revelation 20. Chapter 21. Oh, 21. Verse 3 and 4. I thought you said 20. I heard yeah, 20. Yeah, because I was like, that I heard 20 as well. Yeah, I could yeah. be wrong. That's my, that's my apology. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now this is for those that are in Christ. Yeah. Yes, as as you course. see in Thessalonians, yes. the dead in Christ will rise first. In Christ. I mean, do you have any name? Mm -hmm. uh, this is not for the wicked, though. Yeah, no, I do understand. If that. you go down to verse eight, it shows you that. Mm -hmm. So. But your belief is uh, these people that are good, they go to heaven, right? They will obey God. We'll obey God, go to heaven. What is heaven? Well, currently, right now, Christ is preparing a place for us that he's going to bring down. Now, right now, when people die, they don't go to heaven, they go to Sheol. And in Sheol, there's Abraham, Hosea, and then there's Gehenna, which is hell. So there's paradise and torment. And there's a divide between the two. They can see and interact with each other through voicing, but they can't physically go to one another. And that's the afterlife for us at the moment until Christ's kingdom comes down. And that's my understanding. And I, you know. That's cool. Can we go back to the... Uh to the justice and love part? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, I still don't understand how a loving God can punish people. But you understand how a, you understand how a loving judge can send somebody to prison for the rest of their life. Well, you're yes, okay yes. with that. Um, Lo love, yeah, if you have that, love. I, because those people are dangerous to society. What's right? the opposite yeah, of love? So if you love life, you hate death. Okay. Right? If you love the righteous, you hate the wicked. Okay. So because God loves, he hates as well. It's just it's just logical. That's if you love you can't love everything like yeah. sin and the wicked and all that. So if the wicked choose to do things that are against God now and also God, really wicked in this God is the high, God is the highest of highs. He I understand sees that. I understand So that. so his standard of judgment is higher than any court in the land. I get that. But even your standard judge your judgment standard will not let you burn Well somebody. God hasn't called Christians to do those execute those judgments I, I do like the Catholics but we can compare, did. Though. We can compare. Catholics burn because people. Because we're created in God's image. The Bible does. Yeah, but we're not the judge. We're not. We're not. But what I'm trying to come up, the point I'm trying the to ultimate come judge. up to is, we are created in His image. God is love. But what does that we mean, though? Created in His image. We have all those qualities. That is what it means. Um, well, we also, yes yeah, and that, no. That is actually what it means. No, no. That we're eternal. We're what eternal. Do you think it means? Okay, in His image and likeness, right? Yes. We're created. So what does that, in his mean? that doesn't mean we, we look like God. God looks like us. That doesn't we mean we God? share His authority. No, we don't. Or His power. That's what I'm saying. We have His qualities. Like, what do you mean by qualities? Like, God is love. You create us in His image. Okay, what is we love? We have the ability to love. Yeah. We have the ability to be, to hate. To, be, to hate. That's right. Well, right. The Bible vengeance says, "Vengeance is mine," says yes. the Lord. Okay. Not ours. But God is love. You created in His image. You don't have as much love as God, because the Bible does not say God has love. It says God is love. That's right. That is the extent that it puts it. So in, we can right? only love if we're in Him. Okay. So God, right here, has mm -hmm. love. You are right here. Way and He lives here, in us. But you still have love, right? But you that has love here. Would not even burn a person even because a we're not day. up here. Because we're not, we're not him. up here. So, do you see the illogicality? There's no, there's no logic. No, no, no. See, there isn't a logicality. You, you're, this guy. Okay, look, you're look, having look. a disconnect because no, you you're you're disconnect, you're, you're thinking that God is a man. I don't I don't think no. I'm not God, saying that. But God is a just are, judge. I I'll tell you this. Are not able to. Do I don't that, want the why wicked. Why would God do something I, even more adverse than that? In the next life. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want the wicked in the kingdom of God, and neither does God. No, no, no. I, I get that. And so no, we're there's only there's only one there's only one place. So in that case, you think that God case? loves the person he sends to hell? Okay. In that case, then why doesn't this person just die and well, well, not go on. to hell? Well, 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 Answer me that. Well, hold you on. would still not. He doesn't. He doesn't love the people in hell anymore. Okay, after but this these life. guys are suffering eternally, right? Yes, because for their, why doesn't he just why doesn't he just end their life? So if God is just, then you shouldn't have a problem with that. If God is just, I should know. Yeah. I'm not See, you're, 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 you're judging, you're judging people like they're, like they're, like the they're people suffering in hell. In the yeah, and that, but you're acting like they don't deserve uh, to be there. Huh? That they're no, no, they're no. acting like See, they don't I, deserve I to be I there. I can't decide whether they do or not. That's up to God, right? Okay, but so I'm, why do you have a problem with this? Then why are you I'm deciding whether it's right or wrong if he doesn't? Well, because I can who gave you that say that you are made in his image. You're right here. And what has mankind done? God is right here. If you wouldn't even 
light a person's finger on fire. Listen, you think God that has on, more love than you? Okay, hold on. Burn a person. There's a disconnect there. There's a disconnect there. There's a disconnect, there. disconnect in your life. Hear me out. No. Go ahead. It's not biblical. Show me the show me the disconnect. I can show you from the Bible. Show it to me. Really, really. Okay, so listen. Show it to me. Listen. You're saying God up here. Because you got a here. major yeah. disconnect. You're saying because we want to do it, therefore God shouldn't do it. Is that what you're saying? If we wouldn't even do that, it's why, wrong how for God, God to do it? Do it? You're yes. putting God on man's level. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Have you ever created a human being? No, I don't have to. Well, but you're made in God's image. Why can't you do no, it? No, But God is up here. Oh, What okay. does that mean? What do I mean by God is that up here? That means that God's allowed to create and God's allowed to destroy. Okay, so God's, allowed to create, right. God's allowed to uh, uh, to, to give gifts and he's allowed to take away things. What is, so what is creating? Creation is, is literally making something come from nothing. Literally, okay, so something from when, nothing. God does when that. When somebody gives birth, they're creating? No, God created that through the them. soul. Yeah, okay. God the soul, creates yeah. the soul of that body. Nobody, how, do you, how do you know nobody created God? Because God is everlasting and eternal. How do you know that? Because then that thing would be God. And then what created okay, the God that created the God that created the God? There, there has to be an everlasting, all, all, okay. all eternal, That's outside, outside of space. time, so space, and material. How do you know God wasn't created then? Because he says so. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first one in the Bible. In Revelation, why do, why do what you, you just quoted. Body? He literally That's said, easy. Alpha and Omega. Go ahead, answer me. That's easy. We have a more sure word of prophecy. There are, th there are Old Testament prophecies that have been fulfilled historically in detail, mm -hmm. by name, in detail that could have, for what example, King Cyrus uh -huh. and Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah oh. prophesied over 100 years before Cyrus was born by name that he would be the one to restore Jerusalem, okay. give the decree to restore Jerusalem. Okay. No man could have known that. Okay. Over 300 prophecies of the Messiah, when he would come, by the time he would come, that he would be pierced, that he'd be born in Bethlehem, that, that even his name in the Hebrew, Yeshua, okay? Hundreds of prophecies of that one man doing what he did. More, there's, some of them are more vague, but some of them are very detailed. No man could have known that. Yeah. So, scientific mm, evidence is stupid. What's that? I said scientific evidence is stupid. In the yes. Bible book of Job, they, were, they told, they said that the earth was round. Sure. Thousands of years before they knew that. Sure, I mean, it, but, like but, so, so, for the divine inspiration of scripture, I always go to the Old Testament prophecies. That there's no way, and, and a lot of people try to refute this to no end, mm -hmm. but you can't refute it. I mean, Jeremiah gave a prophecy that Babylon would not be inhabited, but only be inhabited by wild beasts. Right now, you can go to Babylon. Yes, I do. You can go to Babylon right now, and you can look at the old, and we're not talking about modern day Babylon in Iraq. We're talking about the old city. Yeah. Yeah. In the old city, nobody's is nobody there. Okay. It's just beasts and stuff. So, yeah. so these kind of prophecies in the Bible show divine origin. Okay. Not to mention knowing the heart of man. I mean, that's that's a secondary thing, but mainly the prophetic. Yeah. So, I have to run to class. So I'll just finish by saying this: um, I'm a Christian as well, and I do agree with a lot of stuff that you guys are saying. Um, I like to play the devil's advocate to see how much some people that's not know. That's being a Christian with you. Man. What? Advocate for the devil. That's not. A that's not. Sure devil's advocate is not advocating for the devil. That's, it's in the name. It's, it's, I'm mean? asking you questions. I would use I'm a different term. I would use a different term. That's that's fair. That's You're fair. testing I, us. I mean, I'm, we, when I say devil's avoid advocate, the, I, uh, we're avoiding the appearance of evil, my friend. Yeah, it's just a term. It's just a term now. But, but either way, it's the school. I agree with a lot of stuff you're saying. The one thing I, I don't agree with is just the hell, right? My belief is I don't think God punishes Jesus people by going to hell. Jesus said that. I think that He will restore people to everlasting life. Righteous people, right? And the wicked people, I don't think they go to hell. Well, I think Jesus said they do. <laughs> Jesus well, said they do. Jesus is I very I clear. Said I can disciples. show you. I can show well, you. Real quick, the Bible. before you go there, I'm going to quote Jesus. He said, "If your hand causes you to sin, chop it off and, and cast it far away." Yes, I do because it's that. more profitable for you to enter into life maimed than to go where? Jesus preached more on hell, hell than heaven. Yeah, I understand. He's, he said, but if, he said you, if you believe in hell. Jesus your, believed in hell. The entire hell. belief system that you're going to have after that is going to be no, paradoxical. Je Jesus believed in hell. You might not agree with me. That's no why way. I can agree that's, to disagree. That's not true at all. But it will well, be paradoxical. you have a disconnect about who God is. Hell, actually. Uh, you know what would do you well? Hey, hey, my man, my man, go get a book called The Attributes of God. Oh, yeah. By A.W. Tozer. Mm. I will look at that. If you study God's attributes, that'll clear a lot of that up. And, and also, it's it's like it's, seriously it's, from scripture. It's paradoxical to believe it's clear a lot of that, a lot of that everlasting damnation. Because the same word used for everlasting life is used for everlasting We're just, torment. Same that word. entire point just comes from the fact that we know God is love. No, but did you hear what I just said? Love no, no, hear me out. Did you this hear? is just literally simple, simple. Listen, logical Jesus said ever, Jesus, A and B. No, but that's, hear me out. Jesus, we're doing. Jesus said everlasting life everlasting destruction. The same word everlasting is used. So if you're saying everlasting destruction isn't a real thing, it doesn't really happen, then everlasting life is only temporary and it's not real. You would have to believe. Take care, man. You can't believe yeah, right. yeah. All the writers of the Bible, who the testament, all two. I thought, are there not more ones past the apostles <laughs> that are Christian? Well, uh, well so you have to deal with I think, I think that's the misconception here, is that Christianity is not like a new religion. 
It's the new covenant fulfillment of Deuteronomy. Yeah. Yeah, so Isaiah 53. You guys know your prophet Isaiah? Yeah. No. You don't know how to say You guys got a very practical No. You, you are too. You're more practical. Okay. No. Oh, no. You just know it. Okay. You know Isaiah 53? Just go to Catholic school. Catholic school is a Jew. Interesting. That's, that's crazy. I mean, that's the Catholics like murdered you guys. Right? Yeah, they did. They were killing you guys. They sure I did. I would have thought you would ever go to a Catholic school, but mom's Catholic. Okay, your mom's Catholic, but your father's Jewish. Yeah, I understand. Okay, but Isaiah 53, the prophet Isaiah. This is what he said. Tell me who you think he's talking about. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. What are they talking about? They don't want to say it, but it's pretty obvious that they're talking about. Jesus. That's right. And your and your prophet, your Jewish prophet, talked about Jesus hundreds of years before he came into the world. That's probably about 600 years before he came into the world. So, yeah, Christianity unfortunately has been tarred by by people like Luther and Calvin and Roman Catholic Church, but. What sect do you consider yourself? I'm none of those things. Okay. Follower of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He's my Messiah. He's my Messiah. Interesting. I'm a Gentile. Isn't it interesting that a so Jewish man who died 2,000 years ago to affect my life, 2,000 years ago, a Gentile 2,000 years later? Non-denomination? Non-denomination. Yeah. But you, Irish would man. You, would anyone be able to convince you that they were um, another prophet, like someone who speak with God? Well, there's going to be more prophets. Why don't you believe that people like currently say they're prophets? Well, there might be some I wouldn't believe. I haven't heard all of them. But okay. a lot of people are false prophets. We just talked about false prophets in the last days. You have to judge what they're saying. Like in the Old Testament, if they, what they say they're not going to pass, what happened? They're stoned yeah. to death. Let me ask the West. Most of the time, the West. Well, because they don't believe in Jesus. Are all a lot of religions that Christians? A lot of them believe he's a prophet. They might not believe he's a Messiah, but they believe he's a prophet. Well, that's, 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 that's the problem. Though. That's not who yeah. he was. He wasn't a prophet. He was Messiah. Does that mean hell specifically awaits? You can't achieve salvation even if you're raised Muslim? It doesn't mean that at all. It means you can repent. That's all side of the sign right here. I've seen I've seen Muslims be saved. Wait, do people who have never been told about Jesus go to hell? <laughs> they would go to hell for sinning, not for not knowing about Jesus. Okay. What if they How didn't they know about Jesus but they didn't sin? Well everyone sinned. So only the people that know about Jesus can go to heaven. Well the one thing I would say about that is this. If someone is really seeking after the truth, well God wants all to be saved. So he'll see them, and he'll give them more information, more knowledge, more truth, so they can believe in Jesus. Well, what about, like, really holy people? Like, the Dalai Lama has done so much good in his life, like, is a, you know, pillar of... I mean, listen, good people put on a face in public, man. But you know what's going on in that guy's heart. Yeah. Well, but he's... Yeah. Sure, but if, if his heart is... Including the Pope. But it's not the... But the God's word God says. Because he doesn't believe in Christianity. The Psalms say... No, no, the Psalms say, no one is righteous, no, not one. So who goes to heaven? Those who repent of their sin. But they're trusting Jesus and receive forgiveness of sins, the Lamb who was slain. What if they repent of their sins without Jesus? How they they never accept Jesus in their life. It's no atonement. I mean, as a Jew, you don't have the temple anymore, right? You don't have animal sacrifice. You put God gave you the old He said that was destroyed. He's the progress of Jesus' God. He's the cross. He's the final sacrifice for sin. You have to turn to him and trust him. Can you repent for any sin? Any sin. So priests have done terrible things but repent are more likely to go to heaven than someone who's never done a bad thing well, in their life here's, but here's doesn't think Jesus. We have to define repentance. Sure. Like, I'm say, saying I'm sorry. Say you, say you were terrible, like you were using drugs, you were raping people, like you did terrible things, and then you you really say, you go to jail and you find Jesus. You like are sorry for what you did, and you only do... Son of Sam. Things. But someone who has never <laughs> done anything, like there are people that have genuinely never done bad things that, that are true. great, but you don't think that's true. No, I mean, God said it's not true. In the Old Testament, the New Testament said it's not true. Everyone has sinned. I mean, you've lied before, right? Who do you think has never lied before? I don't think I am. Who do you think never lied before? great people in the world. People who have never Especially lied before? Especially people who die young. People who have never... Oh, well, if people die as babies, they're not sinners. Babies aren't sinners in God's eyes. But people who have become the covetous, lustful, lying, painful in their heart, okay. these are all sins in God's eyes, and that's everybody. I have another question. Is heaven, like... Heaven is just better earth. Like, like, what's special about heaven? Well, you don't go to heaven if you die. The Bible talks about a place called Hades you go to, which is like a temporary place you go to to, to await a purgatory. No, it's not purgatory. Purgatory is a deformation of the future. So the Bible teaches Hades is separated in two parts. You find it in Luke 16 of the Bible. 
So you have Abraham in the good part, and you have this. Get the other side too, man. Right? And so nah. you can't switch over. Like first or Turn to Jesus, over. man. Like yeah. someone can pay you out of it, right? How does teach that? But there's a resurrection from the dead. The first resurrection from the dead is for the saints, those who love Jesus and obey him. They go live with him in his kingdom forever. The second resurrection is for the sinners. They go to the lake that burns with fire and crystal forever. At the second resurrection. Let me ask you this. Someone who lives their life, minimal sin, trying to repent and constantly, but live their life in some other sense. You want to preach? Yeah, yeah I'll preach. <laughs> God commands all men everywhere to repent. There is coming a time where you are going to stand before a righteous God, and you will be called to give an account for every thought, every word, and every deed that you've ever said, had, and done in this life. Right now, you have mercy upon you and the fact that God is allowing you to live in his world. And God is just and righteous to do this. He is long-suffering with those who are living against him. The question today is, are you right with God? Do you have a relationship with the living Christ Jesus who died on the cross and rose from the dead? Are you familiar with his death, burial, and resurrection? How you doing? Uh, uh, I just like to know if there's any way that I can help you all. Uh, doing the Lord's work out here. Yeah, I mean, we're basically just standing out here preaching and talking to people. I mean, if you if you really feel like doing it, you can hand out some tracks or something. Pray for us. Here's some gospel tracks if you want to hand these out to people. It's up to, it's up to you. What's your name? Uh, Eric Comstock. I'm Adam. Adam. Yeah. Well, uh, nice to meet you. It's wonderful seeing some seeing those people out here spreading God's word. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Yep. Just keep doing what you're doing. Take care. <laughs> Let us come. Tell us a question. Yeah. Besides so drunkards, does that include people who work in breweries? What do you mean, people that work in breweries? The people who brew beer for a living. That's their are, livelihood. Are, are they getting drunk? They're making beer and it's getting other people drunk. Yeah, I mean, that's something they're going to have to deal with before God. I mean, if you're making something that's getting another person drunk and leading them to hell, then I would probably leave that job. Okay. But Katharina Luther, Martin Luther's wife. I'm not a Lutheran. I thought I thought Luther hated Jews, by the way. He's not, but he's the, if you are... What do you want to I don't follow Luther. We're, we're not, we don't, we don't have it in our mind. We just follow the Bible. Are you Baptist? No. Nope. Are you evangelical? No. Nope. What denomination are you? We follow Jesus, that's it. Okay. And obey the Bible. Are you Catholic? No. Nope. So then you're, whatever you believe in is part of the Protestant Reformation. No, it's not. Luther. Actually, I disagree with a lot of the Protestant Reformation doctrines. Okay. So, so then, it's not black and white. That's like a false dichotomy. So then, what's it's not your, Catholic or Protestant. So then, what is? We just believe the Bible. The Bible says drunkards will go to the kingdom, of, yeah. will not enter the kingdom of heaven, and that's what it is. Okay. That's, I mean, pretty much it. You must repent of your sin, be born again, follow Jesus by the power of the Spirit, endure to the end to be saved. All that, you know, by God's grace. Yourself to be like fundamentalist, then, if you follow like. I just, I just like believe Bible the Bible. Okay. I, just, I mean, it's some of the Bible is poetic language. Some of it's literal. Some of it's prophetic. Rightly interpreted with proper hermeneutics, you know, you can have a sound doctrine. That's what the Bible talks about, is, is, is Scripture has been given by inspiration of God, you know, to, to, for the man of God to be well equipped for every good work. I mean, that's, I just read the Bible and follow Jesus. Would you say that poetry can sometimes have, like, multiple interpretations? Um, it just depends. Some of that needs to be under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Some of the po poetic scriptures are for believers, even even prophetic. So let's say like if you have a carnal mind, you're reading the Bible and you're just like, oh, I don't know. You, you may not interpret it properly, but but some of it's some of it's under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You, you really need God because he's the one that wrote it through men. So what do you think about the original Hebrew text of the Old Testament? What about it? I don't read Hebrew. So Hebrew can be interpreted in many different ways. Each word has multiple words within itself and thus can lead to multiple different interpretations. So then you look at the context of the passage, basically. But the context of the passage can change. Do you have something greatly. specific? Something specific? Yeah. Well, the beginning with the Genesis. Yeah. The it says the I don't know if you're a creationist or Oh, the Hebrew word is definitely day and night. One day, twenty four hour period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Hebrew word actually can mean just an era of time. No, as well. no. 
Yeah, that's what they say, but experts and Hebrew scholars, they will tell you it's a literal night. And in fact, it even emphasizes the point, the day and the night. It doesn't only use the Hebrew word, but then it emphasizes it. It's like God wanted an explanation. I did this in one day. I did this in six days. So yeah, it's definitely a day and a night. Six, okay. And I am a six day creation believer. Okay. Yeah. And then as, 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 as hard as it is for mankind to believe that, God did it. I mean, if he can raise a man from the dead, he can, a, a virgin can be born, uh, give birth to the Savior. How, why can't God create the earth in six days? Okay. And then, so I'm a married woman. Okay. I'm married to a lovely husband, but I am also bisexual. Does that make me a sinner in God's yes. eyes? Yes. But I've never acted on my homosexual feelings. Yeah, but you, are you tempted? Is that yes, what you mean? but everyone's tempted by everything. Well, but I've never acted every, on them. Everyone's tempted, but you could sin in your heart, right? Okay. Jesus said if you look upon a woman or a man with lust, you've committed adultery with them already in your heart. That's a sin. Okay. So I don't know your heart. I don't know if when you're tempted, what you do with that temptation. Because okay. in 1 Corinthians 10, it says that God provides a way of escape. Okay. So, and then it also says in James, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Yeah. So when I'm tempted, that's what I do. I, I believe God's word. I resist the devil by God's grace. I could sin. Yes. I could. I don't have to, though. And God promises us freedom from sin. The Bible says in John 8, who the Son sets free is free indeed. He's talking about sin. Yes. So when you're tempted, if you submit to that temptation, if you, if you claim yourself to be bisexual, yes. I, don't, forgive me if I'm misjudging you, but you're probably sinning in your heart it if you claim that about yourself. By women as well as men, but I don't act upon those temptations. What do you mean by act upon them? I like don't physically I don't, go do that. I don't physically. I don't in my heart. Well, that's I just a temptation. A then. It's a temptation. Yeah, you just rebuke it in the name of Jesus and move on. Okay. But there's temptations I used to get. The devil doesn't even tempt me with anymore because he knows he can't get me. Yeah. Now there are temptations that I still like tempting, temptations to get angry at my wife or something, temptations to get. It, uh, frustrated or anxious, those come to me. Um, but again, in those temptations, we have power by the Spirit to overcome those and not sin, even in the heart. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if that's all it is, a temptation, then you're not sinning. I mean, Jesus was tempted, yes. and he fought against the devil with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, and he overcame. So, cool. But I wouldn't call yourself bisexual. That doesn't mean, a person who's bisexual, it's not just being tempted by the, you know the same sex it's actually that's what you are like that that's who you are okay. like you actually do that so but I wouldn't if call that's yourself who you are, then that's how God created you, right? no God didn't create anybody bisexual it's very but, that, but you just said that's who you are and God creates everyone without mistake right? no what I mean what I mean is is that what I mean by that's who you are that's who you've submitted yourself to be oh, that's okay. so when the Bible talks about a sinful nature yes. It's not talking about being born with it. It's talking about by habitual practice, it's become a second nature to you. Like a basketball player who shoots a thousand threes a day, it becomes like second nature. And so a bisexual has practiced that for so long because they submitted to it, that's who they are. Jesus, Jesus, God created us innocent babies. We didn't create us sinners. At some point in our life, we chose to sin. That's what made us sinners. I know I did in my past, but you're not bisexual if you're not if you're not submitting to those temptations. However, it is right. Thank you so much. Yep. Answering my Thank okay. You. Take, take, take care. God will judge you. There is coming a day when you will be judged. The Bible calls us saints to judge the world in righteousness. The Bible says a spiritual man will judge all things, and he, has, he himself is rightfully judged by no man. Jesus tells us in John 7, 24, I believe, that we are to judge righteous judgment, not according to appearance or hypocritically as the Pharisees do. You have to understand, you will give an account. You can walk past the preaching of this gospel apathetically, assuming that what we are spewing is nonsense, assuming that you have some form of knowledge greater than God. <laughs> but if you die without applying this to your life, it is like jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. Even worse than that, it's like looking at the parachute <coughs> and saying, I don't need that, and jumping out of the airplane anyway. That is what people do when they reject the beautiful salvation bringing sacrifice that Christ made on that cross. The Bible says that God does not delight in the death of the wicked, but would rather that they come to a knowledge of the truth and repent. You have to understand 
unless a man is born again, he will not inherit the kingdom of God. What does born again mean? Does that mean you get sprinkled with some water on your forehead as a baby? Does that mean that you say, I believe in Jesus, and get dunked in a tub of water and come out saying hallelujah? Is that what being born again is? No, being born again is submitting yourself humbly and childlike faith to the Lord Jesus Christ and repenting of all of your sin, forsaking all of your sin, being washed clean of all of your past sins, giving up all of your present sin, and having no plans at all in any way, shape, form, manner, or fashion to continue in sin against God. The Bible says, he who knows to do right and does not do it, to him it is sin. It's not an ambiguous, malleable substance that's passed down from generation to generation. It's not some genetic uh, mutation in the, the human genome that's passed down from your parents to you. The Bible says that God made man upright and he has fallen away to his own imaginations. The Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, stitched together in your mother's womb, made in the image of God. The Bible says that sin is unnatural. It is natural for a man to obey God. It is unnatural for a man to disobey God. Therefore, people in this world who are willingly disobeying God are unnatural. They are going against nature. It's not normal. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. No liar, nor fornicator, nor homosexual, nor thief, nor idolater, nor covetous, nor extortioner, nor reviler, nor drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. But listen up. An important message comes after this. The Apostle Paul says, but as such were some of you. You see, the people he wrote this letter to, there were a lot of them that used to do those things, but they had repented, became born again, and ceased to do them. The Bible says, stop evil, learn to do good. The Bible calls us to live a righteous life. Jesus said, unless your righteousness, in Matthew 5, 20, surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. And 28 verses later, in Matthew 5, 48, Jesus says, be ye therefore perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Does that mean not tripping down the stairs? Does that mean not handing out the wrong change at the gas station? No, perfection in the eyes of God is doing everything that God says to do, and not doing anything that God says not to do. And you can only do this through the Spirit and the grace given to you by God. The Bible says in Titus chapter two, this is the grace of God that has been revealed to all men, bringing salvation, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present day and age, looking forward to the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself on the cross that he may purify us from all unrighteousness that we would be peculiar and zealous for good works. What works are you providing for the Lord Jesus Christ out here today? I ask you, I beseech you, turn in repentance to Jesus Christ while you have time. In Jesus' name. It's a bit rough without the speaker. Turn to Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Folks, who are you following today? Are you following yourself, following a sports star, following your degrees, following money, following where happiness will take you? Or are you following Jesus? Are you following the Jesus Christ of the Word of God? Or a man-made, invented Jesus? Only the Christ. How you doing, man? Oh, praise God. Take care, brother. Lord Jesus Christ, there's only one Lord and one Savior, the man Christ Jesus, one name. 
among men given under heaven whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. One day his government will be the only government in the world as the Bible prophesies that Jesus will return one day to make all things new, to bring all things into fruition, that we're prepared from the foundation of the world and to bring every man's work into an account. Are you ready? God's calling you to salvation. Why would you hold on to sin? Don't you understand that your sin is leading you to hell? Do you not believe? Well, here's the, here's the fact, folks. Your lack of belief doesn't make it go away. Your lack of belief doesn't make it go away. And God is still stretching out his, his hand to sinners today. Those that commit sin against God, he still has his hand outstretched calling you to salvation in Christ Jesus that the goodness and mercy of God would lead you to repentance or do you despise or do you sp despise God's mercy and goodness the same goodness that reigns reign on the just and the unjust on the good and the evil God is good to all but not all are good to God You need to think about your eternal souls, folks. What's going to happen after the day of your death? See, so many people are focused on the here and now only. You got a lot of plans for your life. You got a lot of belief systems that you want to follow. But what is it going to matter when you die? Are your belief systems going to save you when your soul departs from your body? Is your culture going to save you? Is your money going to save you? Is your education going to save you? Is anything that you're walking in now going to translate to the next life? Only Jesus can save. Only Jesus Christ. Not the Jesus of man-made religion. Not the Catholic Jesus. Not the Jehovah Witness Jesus. Not the Muslim Jesus. Not the Mormon Jesus. Not the Jesus that says we're all sinners, even as believers in Christ. Not the Jesus that doesn't have power over your sin. But the true Jesus Christ as testified in the Word of God. The true Jesus Christ that the apostles knew by the power of the Spirit. This Jesus saves. He is the only one that can save, according to his own testimony. Said no man. No man comes to the Father but by Him. There's a lot of other religions in the world, and every other religion is based upon the faith of what man can do, what, how good of a person you can be. In Hinduism, and Buddhism, and Islam, it's all based upon how good you can be. Will your good works outweigh your bad works as an unconverted sinner? But only in Christ is it based upon the work of another man, the man Christ Jesus. We could not be saved apart from him, apart from Jesus, who is the only wise God and Savior, according to Paul and according to me, the only true Savior. He saved me from my sin. He cast out demons out of my life, out of my heart. He miraculously healed me and my wife. He has made me new and holy by His power and His blood. Folks, the same offer is given to you. Don't laugh about it. Don't be proud about it. One day, one day the words of the gospel will be as a hammer to your ears and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, the Bible says. You have this one life, this one life to know who God is and to make it right with him by his grace. <laughs> Folks, how many times have you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? The gospel of Jesus Christ that declares salvation for lost souls, for sinners. The Bible says all have sinned, 
past tense. That means, and come short of the glory of God. That means every man, every man has sinned, every woman has sinned against a holy God and is in need of the glory of God to be saved. So you'll have no excuse. No matter how good you think you are, you're not good enough for the kingdom of God in and of yourself. You're not good enough. If you're not in Christ, you're a sinner. Now you don't have to be a sinner anymore. If you want to be free from your sin, this isn't for those that are proud. If you're proud, you're, gonna, you're just going to face judgment. But for the brokenhearted, God will hear. A broken and contrite spirit, God will not cast out or despise. You come before God with humility, laying down all your knowledge, laying down all your brokenness before Him, and call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says you shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from sin. The wages of sin is death. Saved from death. Saved from the devil. Saved from demonic powers and wickedness of this world. And be free in Christ. And most of you may walk by and just speak in your mind like these guys are crazy. There's no God. We didn't come from God. You know? Most people walk by with a proud look and a mocking smile and say, these guys are nuts. I'm going to continue doing what I'm going to do. And that's just the truth. Why do so many people get so angry at the message of the gospel? If it's not true, why? Why? Nobody's good outside of Christ, but those that are in Christ. Folks, why as so many people reject the message of Jesus? It's the truth because it's the truth. Jesus said, if you, they hate you, they hate me. If they hate your words, they'll hate mine also. And they hated me, they hated the Father. Who or what are you following today, folks? What do you believe in today? What are you chasing after in this life? What are you doing with your life? You see, the world tells you, get good grades in school, nothing wrong with that. Go get a college degree, nothing wrong with that. Go get a good paying job and go get that money. Get financial stability, chase the American dream. In and of these things, if that's all you live for, you're living on sinking sand. If you're just living for your degree, you're living for your life. You're living for money, you're living for power in this life and pursuit of happiness in this life. You're chasing, seeking sand. It's an oasis. Because none of these things can save you. Look, it's a godly thing to work. It's a godly thing to provide. All these things are godly. But if this is your life, if this is what you build your life upon, this is what you chase after to build up your pride, what are you? What are you, richer than the next man, more powerful than the next man? What do you stand upon? And what is it going to be worth when you die? You know, Egyptian pharaohs were some of the most powerful people on earth. And when they died, they tried to take their gold with them. They tried to do all those things to bring these things into the next life. And they can't. You can't bring any of this in the next life. Not your degree, not your money, not your pomp, not your toys, not your pride, none of, that, none of it. Can't bring any of it. So why live for these things? If this is what you base your life upon, what is it to be good in America? What is this subjective morality in America? Tolerance, love is love. What love do you have? that says you can tolerate people that are on their way to hell. That's not love. It's the pursuit of happiness in the flesh. These things are all sinking sand and vanity. You know, King Solomon said, all is vanity. All is vanity in chasing the wind. All your pursuits in life outside of God, 
our vanity in chasing the wind. King Solomon, who had everything more than you will ever have, wrote that vanity of vanities, all is vanity. King Solomon set himself to pursue all the things that would make his flesh happy. He had 700 wives, hundreds of wives and hundreds of concubines that he could fulfill all his pleasures in. And he said all is vanity. He probably had access to mind altering drugs as he went astray to worship demons. And he probably pursued those things as they have found evidence in Canaan of drug residue in these pagan temples. I'm sure Solomon went after those things. He went after building buildings, went after gold, becoming the richest, wisest man in the world. And what did he say? All is vanity. And you're never going to have a fraction of what Solomon had. All is vanity and chasing the wind. You have been indoctrinated to believe that these things are going to fulfill you. Money, jobs, intelligence. None wrong with being intelligent. None wrong with having a job. But if these things are your foundation, if these things are what you chase after, and you just have a proud look and walk by and say, no, I don't need that garbage, then you're on sinking sand. You're chasing the wind. Because one day, the wind is going to escape your grips. Is this some kind of joke? And you're going to die. You'll see what the joke is when you die, sinner. And your soul is not a joke. You see? You're chasing the wind, and when you die, the wind is going to escape you. And you won't take anything with you. All these things that you built your life upon, outside of God, your beliefs. Stop littering the campus, young man. Shouldn't litter the campus like that. Throw it in a trash can if you don't want it. All these things you chased after, all these things you believed in, you'll willfully go after things that'll destroy you. And yet when you die, it matters nothing. Chasing the wind. People walk by and smile and mock in their minds and they say, look at these crazies. But this is the very message that'll save you, young lady. See? She has no tolerance for the truth. No tolerance for the truth. Just laugh. There's no laughing in hell. This isn't a laughing matter. Your soul is precious to God, whether you believe it or not. Nobody's good without Christ, young man. Your pride will not save you. Your mocking will not save you. Your smile, your laughter at the truth will not save you. Why do sinners mock at the truth? Why do sinners have so much pride in their knowledge? Why? One day when you go through life, young people, you may be more humble than you are now. And God will still be there to, to save you if you call on his name, if he gives you time. You see, right now, you have a lot of pride in your youth. You're young, you have breath in your lungs, you walk in pride and have fun. But one day you're going to die and you won't be this proud on the day of your death. You won't be this proud on the day of your death. You won't have your friends with you to laugh it up and lean on. You'll only have God to face on the day of judgment. And the day of judgment will come. But God does love you in this, that he sent his only begotten son to die on a cross for you as an atonement for your sin. God has provided a way out, a way of escape for you if you want it. If you want it, or you can walk in pride, smile and mock, that's your choice. If you want salvation through Christ Jesus and not fall into the pits of hell, you won't be smiling then, you won't be mocking then, you won't be proud then, you'll be wishing you could come back into this life and have a second chance, but your chance is now. God loves you. God doesn't want to cast you into the lake of fire. You know, the Bible says, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's not God's will for you to perish. He didn't give you, he didn't give you life with the intention to destroy you. You are destroying yourself by rejecting the God who formed you in your mother's womb, the God who gave you your soul and life and breath giving you an opportunity to serve him in this life. 
Yes, and he gives you an opportunity every day. He gives you good things to enjoy in this earth, not sinful things, but good things to enjoy in this life. Oh, folks, don't despise the goodness and mercy of God. He gives it to you to lead you to himself. See, there's a lot of pride at Georgia Tech, a lot of pride in Georgia Tech. And the Bible says that you gotta humble yourself. You gotta humble yourself as little children before God because you don't know more than God. You may know more than me in your field of study and maybe some other men. You may grow up to be the most knowledgeable person in your field and you'll build yourself on your pride and arrogance in your knowledge. As the Bible says, knowledge puffs up. There's nothing wrong with knowledge, but there is something wrong with pride. God hates pride. So Jesus said, unless you humble yourself like a little child who knows nothing, because next to God, you don't know anything. In fact, the knowledge you do have is not even a fraction of what God knows. And yet, a lot of people walk around in their pride and their knowledge because it'll, it'll get them somewhere in this life. A lot of people walk around in their pride and their money or their accomplishments or their degrees, but it's not gonna get you anywhere in the life to come. And folks, in the life to come, it's gonna be so much longer. Eternity is so much longer than this life. Folks, don't you understand? When you die, eternity starts right there. No more life here, only eternity. And the longer you go off into eternity, the shorter this life is. The shorter this life is. Oh, folks, 1,000 years, 10,000 years, 100,000 years, a million years, a billion years makes 70 years look so small if you even make it that far. What is this life? What are you chasing? Folks, if I had a million dollars in my hand, all of you would be flocking to me to get it. And I was offering it to the first person that touches me on the shoulder. You would flock to get that money. But right now, God offers you eternal life and you reject it in your pride and your mocking faces and your smiles and your prideful thinking. You reject the simple truth of God's word. Is that at some point or even now, we've been sinners and that sinners will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Don't laugh, it's your soul. God's not laughing, he's calling. He's calling you. God is calling you to repentance. Will you go or will you continue in your sin? Turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ. Your life, your life means nothing outside of God. When you die, you have to leave it here, folks. Only Christ can give you eternal life. <coughs> such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So, like, Notice, out of all of these, which is the one that you think is the worst, like, to society nowadays? They're all going to hell, regardless. They're all going to hell, 100%? Yeah. It has nothing to do with society. This has to do with God's kingdom. God's kingdom. I mean, you can be mocking all you want, man, but the truth is the truth. Yeah, take care, man. The truth is the truth, man. You're going to have to face it one day, either this life or the next, but better in this life. Because God, God loves you enough to die on a cross for you. You can be free. <laughs> free from this. So what was your question? I was just asking you, like, which one out of here do you think, like, goes most against God's word? I mean, it's all against the Lord's word. All, word. Lord's word. all of it. I mean, it all produces death. Right. All of this can lead anybody to hell. Right. Godly sorrow will say, God, I accept my, my punishment. God, I deserve my punishment. I changed my mind. Yeah. I no longer Actually, it's not, because you can't be a homeless. You'll be burning in the lake of fire. I mean, have you ever, have you ever been on fire before? No. You probably couldn't do much being on fire. Yeah. But God loves you enough to send his only begotten son to die on a cross so you wouldn't have to go there. He doesn't want you to go there. So. 
like, what do I do to tell her that like she's gonna burn in hell? Well, do you love her enough to tell her? Uh, I do love her a lot. But, so like, would you, you would you want your family members to, would you want her your family members to burn in hell? I don't. I don't. I don't want my worst enemy to burn in hell. Like what am I supposed to do? Like, pray for her. And ask God to give you an opportunity to share the truth with her. Okay. Is there any like direct intervention? Because my little brother might be thinking about coming back, coming out, or doing something like that. Like, what can I do? Coming out? What do you mean? Like being gay. Oh well, I mean, if you're not a believer, then you can't help him. Right. If you're not, if you don't follow Jesus, then really it's just words. Right. Because it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to help somebody in that way. So if you don't have that, it's not a lot you can say. Because he'll just tell you, hey, look at your life. How are you any better than I am? So what is your opinion on like other religions that teach? Like what about like Jews or Muslims if they are against similar things? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Right. Jesus declared himself to be the Son of Man, the Son of God, so to his followers. And so it's, it's very clear in Scripture that if you don't believe who he is, who he says he is, you have no salvation because he's the only way. In the Quran, it says God has no son, right? Muslims believe that Jesus was switched on the cross by somebody else and really didn't get crucified. That's the foundation of faith in Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is the foundation of our faith. Gotcha. And so a Muslim who doesn't believe in that is lost. When you talk about Jews, okay, there's a lot of Jews that are believers in their Messiah. They're called Messianic Jews, and they're saved. But the Jews that reject the Messiah, you know, like the rabbis after 70 AD, you know, all the way throughout history created their own religion. It's not based on the law of Moses, it's based on rabbis and, and commentaries of rabbis and what they think scripture says, rejecting the Messiah. They thought, they, they call, in Israel today, they call Jesus uh, Yeshu, which is like a curse word. They don't, they don't say Yeshua, they say, let his name be blotted out. And so they believe he's a Gentile God, which he's not. There's a lot of misconceptions. And it doesn't help any that self-proclaimed Christians persecuted Jews during the Holocaust, which they aren't real Christians. The real Christians were fighting against it. Right. People like Corey Ten Boom and, and uh, Bonhoeffer, I think he was a Christian. These were actual believers that were helping Jews during that time, and they got persecuted for it. Right. But fake, fake Christians and those that hated God were actually persecuting Jews. Right. Martin Luther hated Jews himself towards the end of his life. So, yeah, so when you say Jews that are in Judaism, they're lost because they reject their Messiah, which came to save them. So that's just two, two face right there. Right. Well, thank you for the information. Yeah, man. And even Take his care. Own life also, he is not worthy to be my disciple. And he is stand on the plow and look backwards. He's not with the kingdom. Jesus said, Who amongst you, knowing he's going to war with another king? would not sit down first and see if he could go against 20,000 with his own 10,000? Or would he not send out a messenger of peace first for conditions of surrender? You have to understand, Jesus said, in order to plunder a man's house, you must first bind that strong man and then plunder his goods. The devil cannot do such things to God. God is the strong man. You cannot plunder his goods. How can you enter into the kingdom of God and take what is deserved to the righteous who have been uh, forsaken sin, who have been sanctified, how can you be evil, expect to seek those things and get them? Jesus said, you will know a tree by its fruit. A good tree will not produce bad fruit, nor can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, will bring forth good things, but an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart will bring forth evil things. You hypocrites! How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. For every word that a man may utter, every idle word that you speak in this life, you will give an account for in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and not do the things which I ask of you? Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus said, that he who sins is a slave to sin, and a slave will not abide in the house forever. 
but a son will abide in the house forever. Therefore, he who the son sets free shall be free indeed. We are called to keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says how to know if you are a Christian. It's easy as one, two, three, four. It's very easy. First John, chapter two, verses three, four. And by this, we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. You notice that Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and that the, the uh, disciple John wrote that if you don't keep the commandments of Christ, but you claim you know him, that that actually makes you a liar. That means that you don't actually know who Jesus is. You see, not everyone who says, I believe in Jesus is saved. You have to actually obey Jesus. I'll put it to you this way. When I was younger, I grew up in a poor household. And my dad, I believed in him as my dad. And he told me, don't touch the hot propane heater. During the winter, he had a propane heater in the hallway. He said, don't touch it, it will burn you. Now, I believed in my dad as my dad. But I did not believe what my dad said. And I touched that hot propane heater. And it burned me. Now, had I believed in my dad and actually believed his words, I would have obeyed him. And I would have not touched the hot heater. And I would have not gotten burned. But because I did not believe what my dad said, I said I believed that he was my dad, but I didn't believe what he said. I got burned. The same thing goes with God. You can believe in Jesus all day long. But unless you actually believe what Jesus said, you will not inherit eternal life. Now notice, every religion claims Jesus for themselves. Islam says he was a prophet. They admit he did wonderful miracles, but they said he did not die on the cross. They said he was not the son of God. They say that he was a bastard. He had no father. Okay? But we know that Jesus Christ rose from the dead because the Bible was written 600 years before the Quran. Atheists will say Jesus was a good moral teacher. Some of them don't even say that. But a lot of them will say he had some good sayings. Buddhists will say that Jesus was a bodhisattva. He had reached enlightenment, but he forsook his enlightenment to suffer for others. The Hindus say that Jesus is a reincarnation of one of their gods. But Jesus Christ out of his own mouth says, Please share it on all social John media. 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. So every religion tries to claim Jesus as their own, or they try to explain him away some way or another. But Jesus out of his own mouth, uh, he, he puts down every other religion. Why is this? Because Jesus Christ is clearly who he said he was. Now, when dealing with this man, Jesus, who lived 2,000 years ago, roughly, it's a historical fact he was a real person. He really was a Jew. He really died the Roman crucifixion. When you're dealing with him, you have three options. The first option is he was a liar. He claimed to be God, but wasn't really, and he knew that he wasn't, so he intentionally deceived you. The second option is that he was a lunatic, that he really he claimed he was Lord, he wasn't really Lord, but he really thought he was. But what he said wasn't true. The last option, and the one that I proclaim to you today is true, is that Jesus Christ was who he claimed to be. He was Lord God in flesh. And he died on the cross to save you from your sin. That you would no longer walk under sin, no longer be under bondage of sin. That sin would have no more dominion over you. And that you could be free from it. Think about it like this. A fireman's job is to pull a people out of the fire. He shows up to a fire, and he pulls people out of this fire. Afterwards, what does he do? He then goes back to the fire, and he puts the fire out. Jesus is the same way with the sin in your life. You go to him with that sin in your life, and you ask him for his grace and his glory to forgive you of that sin, change your mind, stop walking in it, and he saves you from that sin. But does he leave you in that sin? No. He destroys that sin in your life. He's your spiritual fireman. And Jesus isn't running around with a, a wooden handled ax busting doors down. He is the door. Jesus is the door to salvation. And you cannot enter through that door with all the 
baggage and luggage that you have that's called sin. You have to let it all go. You see, many people out here today will say they don't, they've come to the cross. But have you entered in through the cross? You can't go to heaven unless you enter in through the cross. And this door, it's not a one-way door. Once saved, always saved is not true. You don't just walk through the door. Now there's nothing you can do to be, to, to, to go away from your salvation. It's not like your wallet. You don't drop your wallet and then still know where it is. You lost it. You can't lose your salvation, but you can leave it. You can willingly choose to leave the salvation offered to you in Christ. Once you ascertain the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, of salvation, the beautiful, amazing sanctification of Christ in your life, you can choose to walk away from it freely. You can willingly go back to your sin. And the Bible describes people who do this as a dog lapping up his own vomit. Have you ever seen a dog puke on the sidewalk and go back over to it and start wagging his tail, enjoying it? Share that with everybody, man. Not cool, dude. Somebody might get saved. Somebody might get saved. Sir, you're a mocker. You need to stop mocking the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will go to hell. Oh, I got to dab this fool up. You're right. You're right. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not dabbing you. Oh, bro, he said he's not going to dab me up. You're right. Why would I dab you up? See, there it is. I knew it. There it is. There's the, the epitome of a, of a cool guy right there. F words coming out of his heart. And we're supposed to model ourselves after this person? No. We model ourselves after Jesus Christ, who had no deceit found in his lips. Jesus Christ wasn't a Bible mocker. Jesus Christ wasn't just a prophet. Jesus Christ wasn't just a cool guy. He was God in flesh, and everything he said was true. He rose from the dead. Buddha didn't rise from the dead. Muhammad didn't rise from the dead. Nobody rose from the dead but Jesus Christ. And anyone else who was risen from the dead was done so in the name of Christ. You have to understand Jesus Christ is who we claim to be. And that if you have anything in this life without Jesus, anything in this life aside from Jesus, it's worthless. It's meaningless. All the money in the world, all the sex and drugs in the world, they're not going to make you happy. You have to continuously seek after them. And Jesus said this, What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you exchanging your soul for out here today? Many of you are much smarter than me when it comes to worldly knowledge. In your degrees and uh, areas that you're studying, you're probably so well versed I couldn't keep up. But all of that knowledge, all of that wisdom, so-called, that you have is worthless in the eyes of God without Jesus Christ unless you use it to his kingdom, use it to glorify him. It's meaningless. It won't serve you. Yeah, it might serve you in this world, but it won't serve you in the next. What are you going to do when you stand before a righteous God? Are you going to say, look, God, I got a, I got a, a PhD in business. I got a bachelor's in astronomy. You think that's going to enter you into the kingdom of God? I profess to you it won't. And it certainly won't serve you to stand before God and say, God, I was a proud Catholic. God, I was a proud LGBTQIA plus supporter. God, I was a, I was a proud Muslim. God's going to despise that. He's going to cast you into the lake of fire over that unless you repent. You see, this world... He's going to cast me into a fire? If you don't repent, you don't have to. Though. You can go to heaven. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so just it. See, but you got to get rid of that potty mouth. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Your shirt says save the bees. I, I, I say save everybody from their sin. Yeah, you're right. Save everybody from their sin, and that's what Jesus came to do. You have to understand salvation is offered to you, and you can accept it. But let me give you an example. If I give you a free car, now you have to pay for insurance on that car. Maintain your driver's license. Put gasoline in the, in, in the, in the tank. Put oil in the engine. Put air in the tires. You have to do all these things to maintain this free gift that was given to you. Salvation is the same way. Jesus died on the cross to save you from your sins, and it's offered to you freely, but it costs you something. It costs you something you're not giving to God. God's not taking your sin. He's, he's separating that sin from you as far as the East is from the West. When you despise that sin, when you turn away from it, when you forsake it, and you, you deny it, and no longer practice it, it is separate from you. But you have to understand and without this salvation, you stand in condemnation. You see, Jesus only spoke about the love of God one time 
and the cover of night to one man. That was not to a large group of people. It was to one man by the name of Nicodemus. And he said in John chapter 3, yeah, starting at verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes on him should not perish, but might have everlasting life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. And this is that condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. Do you love darkness rather than light today? Are you enjoying your sin? Because sin is enjoyable for a time. It's enjoyable to those who are not saved. But to those who have become born again, sin is disgusting, it's wicked, it's evil, it's debaucherous. Don't you understand that sin is deceptive? It's exceedingly gross to God. And God despises those who are lukewarm. Lukewarm Christians make Jesus sick to his stomach. In fact, in Revelation 3.16, Jesus says, I would rather you be hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I will spew you out of my mouth. Lukewarm Christians, fake Christians who honor Jesus with their lips, but whose hearts are far from him, they make him sick. Jesus Christ is seeking after a holy church, a bride that is holy, spotless without blemish. You must be perfect in the eyes of Christ. And you can only do that through the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, and the grace that has been offered to you. However, without the grace of God, you will perish. How do you know that you have the grace of God? Well, it is described in the book of Titus. This is the grace of God which brings salvation that has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present day and age. You see, the grace of God teaches you not to be a sinner. Some people who say, I'm a sinner saved by grace, through faith, not of works, lest any man boast, amen. Well, I agree, it's not by the works of the law that you're saved. But grace and faith require works of faith. You have to be obedient to God. You cannot say, I believe in you, God. You're my king, God. You're my Lord, God. But I will not obey you. Because every time you sin, you're saying to God, I will not have you as my Lord. I will not let you lord over my life. I will not submit everything to you, God. I will withhold something in my life from you, God. That is not true surrender. That is not true repentance. Don't you understand? The love of God is this that he would give his life for those that he loves. Jesus died forgiving his enemies, saying, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. But you have to understand, the grace of God, though it be offered to you, is not applied to you automatically. You must apply it to your life like a parachute before jumping out of an airplane. You must apply it like a seatbelt before getting in the vehicle and driving. You get in the car, you put the seatbelt on. Why? Because if you're in a high-speed collision, you don't want to be cast out of that vehicle. And Jesus said it like this, He who hears my sayings and does them, I will alike to a wise man who builds his house on a rock. And when the rain fell, and when the winds blew, and when the waves crashed against his home, it stood because it was built on a solid rock. But he who hears my sayings and does not keep them, I will alike him to a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell, and the winds blew, and the waves crashed on that home, and that home fell. And great was its desolation, for it was not founded on a solid rock. Notice something. Being a Christian is not going to get you out of the tr struggles in life. It gives you a way to get through the struggles in your life. Though the wind fell, and the winds blew, and the waves crashed on both homes, one stood and one fell. The one that stood was the man who believed in Christ and obeyed him. The one that fell was the man who did not obey Christ and did not believe him. This is why Jesus says that you have to obey him. You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus said, not all who say to me, Lord, will enter my kingdom. Come here, go. Only those who there do you go. the will of my Father. Who does the will of God? 
Well, in the book of Matthew, I believe it's chapter 21, Jesus tells a parable of a man who has a vineyard. He has two children. And he says to the first child, go into my vineyard and work today. And the child says, I won't go. But he repented and went anyway. And this man says to the second child, go into my vineyard and work today. And he says, I will go, but does not go. Out of the two, which did the will of God? Obviously, the one who said, I won't go, but repented. God is not seeking after people who say, Jesus is Lord, but go home and sin in private, or who openly sin in public, or approve of other people's sin in public. Those are not who God is seeking after. God is seeking after those who humbly submit themselves, who no longer practice sin. You see, no sinner will enter into the kingdom of God. Contrary to popular opinion, not everybody is a sinner. I'm not a sinner anymore by the grace of God, not by myself, but what God has done through me and me. My brothers here are not sinners anymore by the grace of God, by what God has done in our lives. And he gives us the ability to continue not sinning. Just as much as we have the ability to sin, as Christians we have now been given an ability to overcome sin, to no longer practice sin, to reject sin when it's at the door. You don't have have it, man. You don't have life. If you die in sin, you'll go to hell and you won't have life. If you stay a sinner, you will not enjoy where you end up. But God does not delight in the death of the wicked, but would rather that they come to a state of repentance to learn the truth. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn from me. Jesus said that. He said, come to him. I understand that it's it's a tough time in your life right now. You're making decisions that are going to impact the rest of your life, where you're going to go and get a job, how much debt you're going to be in after you get your scholarship, maybe you don't have a scholarship, after you get your uh, diploma or whatever your certification here is, it's going to cost you something. A lot of stress around keeping a job to pay for your college, keeping a running vehicle. I get it. Life is stressful. But Jesus Christ says that his burden is light. When you come to Christ, you have the ability to get through these things. God will provide. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, the one who gives us what we need, not what we want, not what we desire, but what we need. You see, Satan will give you whatever you want, but God will give you what you need. What do you need? You need a savior. You need salvation. You need sanctification. Please, my friends, turn to Christ today while you have time. (laughs) And spirit and in truth in Jesus' name. It's not funny. It's for you. Right? It's funny how people say love your neighbor and they don't even do it. Yeah, they don't love us. Or Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Don't look sick. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Don't laugh. Turn to Jesus. Don't laugh. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. It's for you. 
Jesus. Okay. I just don't really feel like yelling at people is like doing anything. Well, anything. the Bible says to preach. Do you know what the word preach means? Yes, preaching. But preaching and judgment are two different things. We're called What's wrong with judgment? We're told to hold people accountable. That's judging. Holding people accountable is actually... Christians accountable. Well, Jesus, Jesus said to judge righteous judgment. Right. And Paul said we'll judge the world. So the only judgment that is spoken against in the Bible is hypocritical judgment. Like, let's say I cheat on my wife and I'm coming out here telling all these adulterers they're right. going to hell. I know. I'm just, all I'm saying is, like, this gives Christianity a bad rap. Actually, no. What, what gives Christianity a bad rap are Christians that stay their sinners and they continue in their sin. But you can't just call me a sinner. Can't I didn't call you a sinner. I'm saying Christians in general know, but that like, profess to be Christians I to, I and continue like in sin. I to, like, approach things, like... This just makes people like turn away, in my opinion, from like what I've heard from my my experience. Sure, your experience. It just makes people like turn away. It makes them feel like disgusted. And like I, I literally worked the whole summer camp spreading the gospel, like at like a Christian summer camp. And like it's all in like intention. And if people's ears are already closed, they're not gonna just open them up and listen. Have you ever read the parable of the sower? I have. Okay, so how many of how many grounds were there in the parable of the sower? How many different grounds? I don't know. Four. How many of those were good ground that received the word and it brought forth fruit? One. One out of the four was good ground. That's people walking by. So a majority of the people are going to reject the true gospel of Jesus Christ. But that minority is going to receive it and it's going to bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold. There's a lot of false gospel being preached out there telling people that, here's, here's how it goes. Jesus loves you and has a better life for you. You know, right. just come to Jesus. Right. I'm not right. saying that. Just sin, repeat after me. You know, let's pray this prayer. But listen, you'll always be a sinner and you're always going to sin. That is not the gospel. Nowhere in scripture does it say we're always going to be sinners and that we're always going to sin. Nowhere. In fact, in the New Testament, it never calls Christians sinners, ever. Yeah, my next class starts at 2. That's fine. To Take care. Oh, can I give you something before you go? All right. Don't spread a false gospel. Hey man, you Muslim? Here. That's for you. Thank you. Oh, I, I gave you two. Here, come in. Yeah, that second one. I learned a lot about this. I think I can educate you more. I doubt it, but check it out. Check it out. Check if you want to. Sure. Absolutely. That's for you, man. That's for you. Let me. I like to have. Absolutely, bro. Respectful, good conversation with fellow Christians. So I guess my first question would be, how do you how do you obtain salvation in Islam? You basically humble like, yourself in front of God. To go to paradise. You basically humble yourself in front of God. You can mm -hmm. sin, right? But if you acknowledge that you made some, you did something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. God is merciful. He's gonna forgive you. He's all merciful. He's okay. the one that created us with sin, right? He created That's us what the Quran with says. Desires. He created us with sin. He created us with desires, right? And uh, he, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, said in the Quran, He said that all human beings are sinners, right? That's not what the Bible says, though. What does it say? What does the Bible say? The Bible says teaches that we were created in His image and likeness as innocent babies, and that all have sinned because at one, He's given us a free will. So at one point in our life, we chose to sin against God. That's how we became sinners. We weren't created sinners. We went against the conscience that God gave us to know what is right and wrong, and we became sinners. But He created us innocent babies, neither righteous or unrighteous. So babies are sinners. No, they're not. No. I agree with you. No, they're innocent. But but when, once they they become you know old sure. enough to recognize what's right and wrong, right? So, yeah. And they and sin, then they sin, then they become they, sinners. They become, I agree. Now now we for now now then. here for your Allah right? Huh? He said He's all merciful. Yeah. But from what you just shared with me, it sounds like he compromises justice because a, a God, God has to be perfectly just or his kingdom falls apart. So where does justice come in if he just forgives sinners? Just, just because he feels merciful. Well, to look, different. let me tell you, the, the catch there, there's, there's requirements for sin to be forgiven. Okay. There's requirements. And what right? are those? I'll tell you the first one. The mm -hmm. first one is to repent. Sure. Right? 
The second one is to promise to never do it again, right? And what was the third one? Sincerely mean it. Sincerely, have sincerity, right? Okay. So, so but if somebody else was involved, there's a fourth condition, which is go to them, go to them, right, right. and ask for sure. forgiveness, right? Sure. So, if those requirements are fulfilled, there's no reason for God to not. Because look, <coughs> God created a human being, right? A human being have desire. There's Satan. They have a free right? will. They have a free will, mm -hmm. but they have desires and they have Satan on the side too. Satan, what is what well, is he? Well, he tempts us. He tempts us. Sure. Right. God created Satan but, too. But our desires yeah. go against nature the way God created us when we go and heed to his temptations. Yeah. That's not how God created us. God created us in his image and likeness. So we have it's, a free will. We, believe. we have a free will yeah. to choose. So yeah. when Satan tempts us and we, if you know, as a, as a born-again believer, we've been given power over sin, so we don't have to be a sinner anymore. We don't have to sin anymore. So the Bible teaches. So you, you think you never sin it? Like after you, never sin? Like you don't sin again? No, I could sin. You could sin. But I don't have to anymore. And I've been given power by God to overcome sin. In John chapter 8, Jesus says, Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And he's talking about sin. Yeah. He's actually rebuking people in John 8 for being sinners, yeah. but believing in him. He's rebuking that. He said, you're of your father, the devil, because you're still a sinner. In yeah. me, there's freedom from sin, so you're no longer a sinner. So, so the Bible teaches atonement, right? Levit Leviticus 17, it says that you're not supposed to drink blood. Why? Because God has given the blood for an atonement. And that's why Jesus came. See, the God of the Bible doesn't just forgive because he's all merciful. Like, yeah. oh, you know what? You repented. You mean it. I'm just going to wash it away just because you mean it. See, that's, right. that's like a, man, a murderer going before a judge. He's guilty of murder, yeah. and he just says, oh, please forgive me. I won't do it again. Okay, go ahead. Well, that's different. That's, that's a lack of justice. Now, that is different. Now, in, in, in the Bible, mm -hmm. Christ died to shed his blood as an atonement. What was the so, proof for that? The proof for Christ dying? Yeah. Tacitus, Josephus. Do we that's have secular any history. historical evidence? Right? Absolutely. I just told you. That's, out, that's extra biblical. Well, I'll say Extra that's, biblical. What that's what I'm looking now, for. Now, the Bible, yeah, the yeah, Bible. Yeah. Historically, it is accurate that Jesus died. Yeah, even atheists but admit that. For, for oh, Muslims, yeah. 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 We but, know that somebody died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for that he Muslims, died. For Muslims, we believe not that Jesus did not oh, die. Oh, I know, I know. He, he, was traded. he was traded. So, so what am I, now, if somebody wrote a book about your life, right? Yeah. Right? Who would you rather want writing a book about your life? Somebody that lived 600 years after you, lived 800 miles away from where you walked and taught and spoke yeah. or those that lived with you walked with you heard you and witnessed you which one would you rather have the thing is the thing is is that here we need a book not about you know we, we need a book sure. the book that we need is about the truth god that's right not like who lived like the historical whatever, whatever well whatever. i'm getting to a point there okay so the quran says god has no son but the Bible testifies that his witnesses said that he's the son of God. The so there's a contradiction the, the, the there. The Old Testament as well refers to a lot of people as sons of God, right? Yeah, but it's a different context in the Greek. But what, what, there's, what, there's a definite article right? about Jesus, the son of God. There's many sons of God, yes. Yeah. But in the Greek, when you're talking about Jesus, it's different. It's, in Colossians, he even calls him the firstborn, which means preeminence. Yeah. So in the Greek, it's a preeminent. It's not that he was created. It means he's preeminent above all. He is the Son of God, not a Son of God, but the capital T Son of God, and that's 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 the indication in the Greek. That's uh, in the Greek. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's why it's translated in English as such as the Son of God. He's not only that; he fulfills the prophetic, uh, like Daniel, when the Messiah should come, the timing of the Messiah, Daniel 9, I think it's Daniel 9 or Daniel 8, uh, Zechariah 12, where it says he'd be pierced, Isaiah 53, that he'd be an atonement. So. Jesus fulfills all these Old Testament prophecies of who the Messiah would be. Where he was, Micah, it says we where he was born. Jesus the Messiah. That's no, the I know, but but you don't believe he's the Son of God. We don't believe he's the right. Son of God because God is doesn't need a son. Well, it's not that he needs or doesn't need a son. It's that yeah. he is. He is the Son of but God. But there's the thing, if God have a son, right, and he sent him so that he basically kill him, right, so that all of the sins sure. are forgiven. That's just for me, just from his like, body, his body, his body. Yeah. Well, so, he suffered. So he, he didn't. He said, "Sure, God, God, why to. have you forsaken me?" Well, you know he's when he said that he was prophetically referring to Psalm 22. If you read Psalm 22, that's the beginning of that psalm. And so by saying that, 
all the Pharisees around him knew who he was talking about, that he was identifying himself as the suffering servant in Psalm 22. That's why he said that, right? Please. And and how did God forsake him? He he. In Isaiah 53, it says it pleased the Father to bruise him or crush him. Why did it please him? Because he is an atonement for the whole world and their sins. Now, God didn't die. The man Christ Jesus died and he rose again. And God the Father knew that he was just gonna rise up and come back to me. So it wasn't a big deal like that. It, well, it didn't pain the Father to crush his son. Look, like that. I think, what is the requirement for that to happen? What you mean? Why is that required? because of what it says in Leviticus 17. God wrote the law. What did he and, say? And the way he wrote it was that this is the only way that sin can be atoned for by is by, by the blood. Now in the old covenant, it was animals. In yeah. the new covenant, Jeremiah, it's Jeremiah, no, no, it's Jeremiah 31. It's the son yeah. of God, the son of God. He rose, it's not humans. I'm not gonna go sacrifice <laughs> a human for, <laughs> no. One man, the son of God, Jeremiah 31. If you yeah. read Jeremiah 31, it talks about the new covenant to Israel. Yeah. That he had to come and fulfill that. Now, it's just a body, right? That body that Jesus had, he fulfilled the whole law of Moses perfectly. If he didn't, I wouldn't be saved. Yeah. I wouldn't have demons cast out of me at some point. I wouldn't have seen my wife healed from an incurable disease. Yeah. I wouldn't have had prophecies over my life fulfilled yeah. 17 years later. Right. There would have been no God if Jesus was a sinner. I mean, that's the thing. Experience, everybody has experience. I had some personal experiences too, well, but we don't good. need to talk about nope, that. Nope, I'm just saying. Logically, you know what I'm saying? I'm just it's saying, like, it's... Jesus, when he died, yeah. it wasn't God dying. It was the man's body as a sacrifice. See, God, it says in the scriptures prophesied about Jesus, uh, I think it's in... in uh, a body you prepared to me to do thy will, O God. Is that yeah. in Hebrews? I can't remember. I can't think it all. But from the foundation of the world, God had prepared for this to happen, yeah. right? To that moment in time that this body was prepared for the Son of God to live in for 33 years to yeah. be an atonement so that that blood could not only save Israel, but you, me, me, you, everybody in the world. Okay. But now, the, the Muslim contention is, is that how could, how could God kill his son or how could God die? No, it's not about that is just like some uh, natural inclinations that all humans have to think logically about things and not be like, oh, got you. This doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? I understand. Like for me, I can explain when, that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, let me I'll carry on with this yeah, point. For me personally, right? Yeah. I can't speak for all for all people, but for me personally, when I learn about okay, there's one God. He sent down prophets. These prophets delivered the message of God. Right? The message of God is 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 there, there's a possibility for it to be to be distorted right so that's that's normal we are humans we can we can add some stuff to the, to, to the book Could. or whatever we can unless course. god's in control of it unless god is in control of it right mm -hmm. and and the thing about the quran god said we will send down this book and we will be the one to preserve it who wrote who dictated the quran angel gabriel okay Prophet muhammad so where's Hello. the evidence where's the evidence of that historical evidence we have that everything Where? written we have in the Quran, in the Hadith, in the Hadith, the okay, Hadith, the hadith. narrations okay. sure. of the Prophet. Okay. And we have some so, Hadith, authentic Hadith. You know what authentic Hadith is, right? So, so Gabriel, the same Gabriel that came to Mary, uh -huh. that said uh -huh. God's son, yeah. is the same Gabriel that came to Muhammad that I mean, said God has no son. Well, so we believe that angel Gabriel going. Somebody's to Mary, wrong here, man. Uh, that's that. that somebody's I agree wrong. With you. So, Somebody's so, wrong. So who? Yes. <laughs> who? Okay, so here, who am I going to believe logically? Yeah. One man. Yeah who supposedly dictated the whole Quran uh -huh. or over a period of 23 years 23 years uh -huh. or or a biblical narrative yeah that has over 40 authors over 2000 years hold on hold on yeah. that harmonizes okay throughout his not only that not only that not only that hold on not only that yeah we have old testament prophecies for example the king cyrus prophecy that is that's verified by the cyrus cylinder in history jeremiah's prophecies of the seven you know the 70 years that they would be in captivity and they come back daniel's prophecies of the coming of the messiah there is to the detail prophecies about not only Jesus but about historical events, oh, powers that came. No, 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 it's not the same. No, that's a good They took example. from the Bible. I'll give you an example. Okay. Persia, you, you want to say something, but I'm going to say this and then you can say, okay? The Persians and the Romans, they were at war. Sure. Right? Or, the Romans were defeated by the Persians. Mm -hmm. In the Quran, God says, the Persians have been defeated by the Romans within three to nine years, which is Bat Sinin. Bat Sinin means three to nine years. Sure. 
the Romans will prevail again and they're going to win. And that's something that happens. That happens. So, Historical evidence. This is real. So what year did they defeat the Romans in? And what year was it written that? What year was it written? You're talking about... Like, what? that, I think it was that eight, prophecy. I think it was like 7th century. So, how how many years exactly. after was it fulfilled after it was written? Like three, After the Quran was... Like, like 3 to 9 years. Okay, well, Isaiah prophesied Cyrus over 100 years before he was even born while Babylon was in control. But three to nine years is pretty precise. I mean, to you say, know, to say if, that, the, if, if so, somebody, so I could say right now, hey, in three to nine years, China's gonna defeat the United States. Oh, we don't, yeah, but, but if, if you're right, then cool. It's a vague but prophecy. That is a vague prophecy. And it was really short. I mean, it, you could, like, I could right now. But the Romans and I, Persia was I, so big but, empires, Okay, so you know? three to nine years, this yeah. is what you could do, right? Mm. Three to nine years, it's so close. You hear from caravans, you hear from news bringers from different lands, yeah. how strong Persia's getting. Right. Man, they could beat the Romans. Yeah. You know, I could look on CNN, Fox News, I don't really watch them, whatever. Right. Sure. I, they're bad news sources, both of them. Sure. Sure. But yeah. online news and say, you know what? This could happen in three to nine years. Uh -huh. Muhammad was bold enough to write it down, or not write it down, but dictate it or whatever. Okay, let me tell you another prophecy that Prophet Muhammad said uh -huh. that is not included in the Quran, this is just authentic hadith. Okay. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that there will come a time, right, where their barefoot walking Arabs owning dark camels will start competing with each other to build tall buildings. Yeah, I've heard I that. I gotta before ask you too. a question. Where's the tallest that's, building? That's, that's a pretty precise. That's vague too, man. That's not okay. That could be. That's vague I mean, too. The, 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 and what, what's the purpose? Like, for example, what's the purpose of it? See, all the prophecies in the Bible. Is this the sign of the Day of Judgment? Minor sign. When that time comes, it's like, yeah. It's sure. Minor sign of the day of judgment. So, and we live go ahead, in that go ahead. time, yeah. right? Okay, say something. Yeah, you can um, say something. So, we're not, so, you were saying, like, oh, what happens in the Bible too, that prophecies come true. But that, we're not. In detail. Muslims, yeah, in detail, that's fine. Muslims don't believe that the entire Bible is false. We believe that a lot of it is true. Well, so what don't you believe? Well, where's time. your evidence for that, though? I mean, okay. and when was it changed? Did Muhammad have an actual real Bible? Let me let me no, tell you. No, no, but like, was Muhammad's the Bible that was around during Muhammad's time in yeah. 600s, right? Yeah, right. He was yeah. not able to read and write, so even if a Bible was around, around he wouldn't. So when was it corrupted? To... That's the question. This, that, let me tell you well, something. No, no, but wait, wait. So, sorry, kind of say, Get, say, okay. say, say. I want to say earlier you said a point about like who would you rather believe, someone who. Um, like was written over 20. It's, it's like Joseph Smith. Years, he wrote the Book of Mormon. One so man. Many authors, right? Yeah. Versus like one person who did it over 23 years. Well, I'll say you can't really prove historically that the Bible is still the same it was when it was first created. Why not? We don't have Bibles from when Jesus was still alive. A full. Uh, actually, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls from when before Jesus. But was. that's the Old Testament, okay. and it's 5,000 years after Moses. Well, the 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 oldest yeah. fragments we have go back to the 300s, yeah. and you can reconstruct. Still, but it doesn't on, go back all the way to Hold Moses. on, hold on. You can re reconstruct the whole New Testament by even earlier than that by the ancient church fathers. So there, any any genuine scholar of the historicity of the entirety of the sure. Bible. Sure. Do an it, any genuine scholar of the historicity of the Bible that's not tainted by Islam or whatever, that not even tainted, not even a Christian that studied this, doesn't refute the fact that the Bible says what it says. Also, also I can I can tell you like even small examples of how things are changed. Mm -hmm. So in Islam, we believe that there is um, sort of like a a purpose to the like the language in which it's what's called. So a big thing is we we prioritize. The language, even when we pray salah or pray or do prayer, we read stuff in Arabic. Even if I don't speak Arabic, we still say it in Arabic. We emphasize the importance of the language which is brought in because that in itself has its own its own meaning. Like you said, in Greek, there's like differences in like now when it's changed to English, someone can interpret it as something different. Well, not necessarily as long as it's interpreted so, rightly. Example. As long as it's interpreted rightly. Well, and and if there's some discrepancy, we can always go back to that. And God is a God of all languages. So just because it was brought out in Hebrew. And then Greek, which was the major language of the time, now it's, you know, the predominant business language is basically English across the world. I mean, it's not the most widely spoken language, but it is the most business used language in I the mean, world. Also, so I, it would I make sense. Give you an example of how it's been changed. Yeah, um, give me one even example. If you were to look at the Bible, there's small, there's small changes. Like what? I have a like on my phone. Jesus is the Son of God? That's never changed. No, no, no. Let me tell you, I, 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 got, I got a lot of notes. I got a lot of notes. 
Grand Isaiah Montgomery. 15 something. Yeah, oh, I know where you're going. Yeah. Septuagint and has it as 20 years old, though. Yeah, so what I'm saying and, is... And, and you can answer that from the King James. Something small hasn't changed, right? And it's still mass-produced. But it hasn't been changed. I, I've, wow. seen that, I've seen how it's Muslims... It's in, in different parts of the Bible. I, it says I, different I, ages. I, I see how Muslims apologists go to that, but if you look in the Septuagint, which is the old Greek, it has his age correctly and 20 years old. And in the, years old. In the key, which, it's, which, fine, it's it in the Septuagint. In Septuagint. correct in one place. What I'm saying is... And there's an explanation. The Bible, uh, look up David in, Daniel's explanation on why it says Ahaziah is 40 years old in one part and then 22, 22, 22, 22, 22 years old yeah. in another part of the King James Bible. Right. There's that's a reason for it. Like, that's What's the reason? Example what, look up that video. Changed. He explains it uh, a lot better than I could. But even yet and still, in the Septuagint, it has it as 20 in the right spot. And it, it could... And, and the other theory is it could have been a, a small copyist error. But again, something like that, I mean... The, the, I mean, still, that leads to a very problem that if they The Quran has over 26 Arabic Qurans, man. That is true. 26 Arabic Qurans. Over, Quran. over Where do you get 26. the information from? 1920s, they, they actually consolidated them into one Quran. That's not true. <laughs> there's, there's, there's one Quran, really, right? There's, there's one, there's one, there's there's one not. There's really Qurans on display. There's not, man. There's they one manuscript. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta say this. It's not, man. There's one manuscript, right? one manuscript in the Birmingham University. It's called the Birmingham University of Quran, sure. right? Yeah. And it is dated to the end of the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And if you compare that manuscript that we have in that Birmingham University, okay. right? And you compare it to any Quran you go to. to That's not any, true, man. That is true. You gotta That's, find out yourself. I I'm have. Just telling you. I've, oh. I've seen the claim. And, no, did you, did you compare and, it yourself? And, That's and, the question. And different people utter it different. It's written a little differently in some Qur'ans. Let me explain something. Let me explain something to you. There's Qira'at. Qira'at is pronunciation. That's right. right? There's different tribes in the Arabs sure. that pronounce things differently, mm -hmm. right? Hence, like, if there is, let's say, for instance, um, like Maliki Yawmiddin. Right? Maliki Yawmiddin or Maliki Yawmiddin. Right. So, the Malikis, right, the Qira'at of Warsh, right, is Maliki, right? But Hafs, they say Maliki. Those are two different pronunciations, but doesn't but it's not a different word. It's the same exact meaning. The main thing I'm saying is that every uh, letter of the Quran in any uh, I gotta find the, the Muslim Quran. apologist that disagreed with you. I can't remember his name. Oh yeah. But tell he me. came out I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, if you tell me I watched a video know. and he actually admitted that yeah, there's multiple Qurans and this is when this happened. There was also one guy who came out of Islam yeah. that became a Christian because of these things. Nabil Qureshi. No, not Nabil Qureshi. He's dead. That guy is not Muslim. He's dead. Well he was he, it was Ahmadi. Ahmadi he, is a, yeah, is, is, they're a more peaceful sect of Islam, which which I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm peaceful man, what are you? I, well, you peaceful. are, but you're not a real Muslim according to. I'm not a to, real Muslim. Not man. according, not according to the Prophet Muhammad. What's okay? How, no. Do, you know, okay, do no. you know the rules of war according to Islam? I, I, do you know them? All I know is that, that is that after peaceful. after he, after he took Mecca. The his 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 philosophy changed. Oh, you he started know. becoming a man of war. He was a little more peaceful before Mecca, but he became a warrior. Now, let me tell you something. This is this is what 13 years of Mecca, Prophet Muhammad and his companions experienced a lot. He experienced a lot of oppression, right? A they lot wouldn't of convert. Huh? They wouldn't convert. Okay, okay, but no, no, no. They, the Prophet Muhammad and his companions, they experienced oppression. They were oppressed, and, right? And so do Christians across the world. Of course, sure. By, sure. By so Muslims. Throughout where? In Sharia law countries. Yeah? Yes. Well They're persecuted. I get okay, stories. I get stories in my email. Are, let that's me tell you something. Not, not by real Christians. No. These are these Christians are, Christians are commanded by Jesus to turn the other cheek and not fight fight your enemy. Real Muslims either. It does. It does not. How can you say that? Are the know? Crusades Muslim? Uh, yeah, Christians. Well, they're, They're not Christians because not Christians? you know what Jesus said? Yeah. He said this You shall know them by their fruit. He told Peter, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So a real Christian is going to follow Jesus and obey Jesus. Jesus never commanded anybody to take up swords and conquer Jerusalem. I'm against the Crusades. I'm against the Catholic Empire. But you think when Jesus, they're not Christians. When Jesus comes back, there's not going to be any, you know what I'm saying, fighting going on? Jesus is going to be doing the fighting himself yeah. in the Bible. When he returns in Revelation, when he returns in yeah, Ze Zechariah 14. Yeah. We should, we're yeah. supposed to well, join him. <laughs> when Jesus comes back, the, he's supposed the, to go join the, him. That's what Prophet Salah said. The Muslim Imam Mahdi is actually the Antichrist in the Bible. Really? Mm hmm? Interesting. I got a question. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. It's like 2.30 on a Tuesday afternoon. It's like 100 degrees. Do you have a job? You know, I got a question too. I got a, hold on, hold on. I got a question too. I got a question too. Why do college students who go to school full time come up and ask us at every campus, 
Get a job. Do you have a job? Why? You guys it's only need on a so, 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 so how do you know I'm not self-employed and I have a mobile mobile job? I'm just asking. Yeah, but my, my, my question is why does that logic even come by people's minds when they walk by us? It's like you've been trained to like, oh, nine to five job. That's what that's the only thing you can get. So if they're out here, they must not have a job, right? I'm just asking. But you're assuming that I didn't have a job. Well, it's like 100 degrees out. Like you could have come at like. 60. Actually, in the shade, it's about 89, maybe. Not yeah, 100. Yeah, it's not that bad. Standing here, I'm, I'm not. It's not bad at all. Are you all protesting? But yes, no, no, I have no, no, a job. No. We're not protesting. We're actually preaching the gospel, sharing the gospel. Yeah. We're Muslim. We're not. We're not. Yeah. Muslim. We're talk. We're having a talk about Islam and Christianity. Oh. oh. Yeah. Hmm? Aren't they like really similar? Yeah, not really. Some similarities. There's some similarities the, fa the, the fa foundational, they're not. Because, yeah. The creed, yeah. because we born again believers believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died on a cross and shed His blood for your sin. Through repentance and faith in Him, you can be born again and be saved in the future. But in Islam, it's not the same. They don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, they don't believe He died on a cross. Mm -hmm. So foundationally, it's totally different. What does Faith Keeper Israelites mean? Th those, that's a cult of. African Americans who believe that Jesus was black and that when Jesus returns, he's going to put all white people in bondage. And that the tribe of Judah from the Bible is all African Americans and other tribes of Israel are like Puerto Ricans and Native Americans. It's, it's a cult, basically. It's a racist hate cult, actually. Kind of like the KKK, but they're, the KKK was a little bit more violent than they are. Why is this? Yeah, I mean, it's Muslims on there, but not like. I mean, I mean. What's that? Why is that? Well, idolaters is up there. I don't have enough room up there to name every single religion. But Islam is a predominant religion, a, a very big religion in America, and growing. So we kind of speak to our audience by putting that up there. Why not just non-Christians? Well, that's a lot of letters, and I got other things to put up there. And that kind of idolaters covers non-Christians. Did you design this? Actually, he designed it. I added a few more on there, like transgender and racist, but. <laughs> anyway. Um, I got a, I got a question for yeah. you, right? I mean, let's go back to the, the authenticity of the book. We're talking about the preservation of the Quran the preservation and the, the, the preservation. I mean, we know that the Quran is preserved. Oh, no, we, we know that, what right? After he took my oh, oh, yeah. I mean, about, we, yeah. we, we kind of, we I mean, there's, look, let's talk about, let's, let's stay on topic, right? So let me ask you something, right? When is the first manuscript, right, of the Bible that we know of, you know, was written? Was written? Yeah, when, when, when was it written? I don't know, it'd probably be Job. Not, uh, let's say New Testament. Maybe. New Testament? New Testament yeah. 30s to 40s AD, Gospel of Mark. Gospel of Mark, right? Probably 40s, late 40s, early 50s, I think that's what they're saying. Less than a gen, I mean, all the Gospels were finished by AD 100. AD 100? By AD 100, yeah, by then. If you got, if you, if you've seen otherwise, you got bad information. AD 100? Yeah, AD. No, AD. AD. Alpha Delta. 100. Before then. 100 AD. Oh, after that. Oh no, AD. Okay, AD, yeah. No, no, no. Before 100. Oh no, no. A, A, the two letters. Yeah, 100 AD. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. Late, late, 48, 48 yeah. AD. The Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark. Yeah, that's the. And when, when was that? After Jesus was. Probably. I mean, he lived till he's 33, 34. So. Right. Just over 10 years. It's a little long, man. No, it's not. Actually, in a historical context, no way. The Bible is very close. In fact, it it is very John close, was written so. by John. He's an eyewitness. But hold on, John. When, Mark. When, when Mark was, the... was Mark was written by John Mark, who heard it from Peter. Right. Matthew was a disciple. Luke right. was the physician who heard all the gospel stories, probably from Mary, yeah. from Paul, yeah. who he didn't walk with Jesus at that time, but he witnessed Jesus on the road to Damascus. Right. So, so the the the, the story of Christ is is there, there's, I'm, and don't take this, don't take offense to this, but there's not one historian when they're looking at Jesus Christ would go to the Quran. Not one 
genuine. I'm not looking for the story of Jesus you know Christ. God knows best, like, right? God knows the story I, of I Jesus Christ. I got you. Christ, I got right? you. But but I'm looking but, for the truth. You know that's the saying? truth. So so if you want the truth, you go to his followers who right. actually witnessed these things. Who are who are and the writers of the Bible? John. You said John. John what? John the Apostle, who witnessed no, Christ. No, what's his last name? What's his father's name? Uh, That's how we identify people. So John and James, his father's name was uh, son of, oh, he was a fisherman. What's his name? Hey, bro, what was John and James' dad's name? Is it in the Bible? Uh, it was, uh, Zebedee. Zebedee. That's me. That's right. Sons of Zebedee. John, son of Zebedee. Me, son of Zebedee. And that is the one that wrote the book of John. John the Apostle. John wrote, the Apostle was the wrote one that the Gospel wrote of John. the Gospel of John. According to John, yeah. A witness of Jesus Christ. You ever uh, read it? You ever read it? I've read. I've read a read lot it. of the Bible. It's one of I the read, most I intimate accounts of Jesus. It reveals him as the Son of God, as God manifests in the flesh, and as his power, his reign, his most intimate moments are in that Gospel. And that is the only the only book of the uh, of the Gospel no, Luke. that talks about, that talks about explicitly, they say some, some, some uh, ambiguous verse where it says, uh, uh, the the verse where it says uh, some some somebody came to 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 Jesus peace be upon him and, and they called him uh, Lord Lord right so, uh, was that in John that was in John you're right? talking about Thomas yeah when Thomas doubted Jesus and he said my Lord and my, my Lord. God but it's not that I mean John John, right? John opens up in John chapter one saying in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God yeah John eight fifty eight says before Abraham was I am and Jesus gives many parables That's in about. John, right? Sure. Why is it not in, in the other Gospels, Luke, Mark? Well, I'd have to I have to look at Luke and Mark. But if any of those were not in the other Gospels, it's still in John, That's even the if they weren't. That's but it does mention in parables about about how can how can hold on, man? This telemarketer has been calling me all day. Um, so Jesus gives a parable to the Pharisees, and he basically saying, you know, the Son of Man is called the root and offspring of Jesse, or, or how can oh he calls him Lord, at the same time being his son. So how can David in the in the flesh call him his son, be his son, but in the spirit call him Lord? And so Jesus gives these little hints yeah. of who he really is in parables, because in Philippians three it talks about how uh, he didn't he didn't he didn't come saying, look at me, I'm God. He came in humility as a form of a servant, taking on, and you can read this in Philippians 2. Well, Philippians 2. Because, because in the wisdom of God, I mean, anybody would, okay, so if, if God comes out of the sky, saying, I am God, come worship me, actually Satan tempted him to do that in the wilderness. But no, Jesus is looking for genuine followers. So in the wisdom of God, he's not just gonna, everybody in the world would follow him if he came in the, in the sky, as a great whatever power of God, would they follow him? Or would they be scared of him? Or would they think it was a figment of their imagination? So the way Jesus did it was in such humility and wisdom so that no man would have any excuse. But don't you think it created a little confusion? For some, for some. Because for most, a lot of, a lot of. Well, Jesus said narrow is the way. What does that mean? That means there's going to be few that find it. It's not, most people are going to end up in hell, according to Jesus. But why is that, though? Because why, why wouldn't it be because in John three, just... because in John three it says, "Light has come into the world, and men yeah. love darkness rather than light." From God's perspective, it was clear, because it's clear enough for man to get it. But the problem is, is men love their sin more than God, and so that's why they can't see, and God knows that they I mean, can't yeah. see. Yeah. So, so for those for those that that want to be free from their sin, they've turned from their sin to Christ. He'll give them eyes to see who He is. And that's what he gave to his followers. Like, there's no shadow of doubt in my mind that he is God, manifest in the flesh. He rose again from the dead, right? And he sits upon the right hand of the Father. One God, three persons. Now, a lot of people like to argue that the, I don't use the word Trinity because I just don't like that word. But this is who God says he is. In fact, the ancient Jewish rabbis, and even in the Old Testament, yeah. saw two Yahwehs. It wasn't until after Jesus died that the rabbis started changing that because they wanted to reject the Messiah. Because there's a pertinent effort to reject I who their Messiah that. is. We believe that as Muslims that the Jews wanted to reject the Messiah. And sure. They don't believe as the, they don't believe the Antichrist as the actual Messiah. That's possible, but there are some Jews that believe in their Messiah, and there are some also some Arabs that used to be Muslim that believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Well, we know. And in Israel right now, they they're hand in hand worshiping God together. Yeah. I mean, I've been to Israel like four times. I've seen it with my own eyes. Wow. But yeah. you know.
I mean, and I've the, witnessed the Muslims in Israel too, by the way. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> too, sure. So there is there is some interesting things on uh in the Bible that I, I'm I'm gonna talk about this right yeah briefly and then I have to go. You gotta go. Okay. Yeah. It's been a good conversation. For sure. For sure. But one yeah. thing one thing I wanted so. to, to to talk about was um the Valley of Becca. You ever heard of that? The what? The Valley of Becca. Of Becca? Is this in the Quran? No, it's in the Bible. What do you mean? The Valley of Becca. In Psalms. I'll tell okay. you exactly when. So are you taking this from Psalms. one of these Muslim Psalms. apologists, man, that no, you see on YouTube? No, no, no. I'm just, I've actually seen it myself. I have okay, it okay, down. Okay, go ahead. Psalms 84, right? I can read it for you. Yeah. Which version of the Bible would you KJV. like to read it? KJV. King James. King James, mm -hmm. King James? okay. Psalms 84, KJV. All right. I'm going to go with you. It says, how amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. Man, this, this, this is a very hard language, bro. <laughs> uh, Peaceful. How, yeah. How beautiful. Yeah, exactly. My soul longeth, yeah, even fainted. Faints for, for you. Yeah. Fainted for the course of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. Yet a sparrow had found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Yeah. Selah, right? Yeah, it's like a pause. Where is Selah? Where, Selah is an expression. It's like a pause. It's not a place. In, 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 in some other versions, it says, in Selah. Nah, man, nah. <laughs> See what? Bro, yeah, don't me. do that, man. Don't do that. Like, like you ever heard of Zakir Naik? Obviously, probably. Yeah, he, of course. He bro. tried. He, I heard him say one time, and I've met Shabir Ali, by the way. Uh, oh, at, you did? Yep. At oh, wow. a, at an Igna convention in Atlanta. Oh wow. Yeah. So so uh, so uh, they, I heard him one time try to put Muhammad in John, ten, I think, when Jesus promises another Comforter. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to assert that that was Muhammad. But yet, if it is Muhammad, then Muhammad's going to live inside of us, I guess. And he's the spirit of truth. Now, Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, like prophesying. But the Holy Spirit was already around at the time, right? No, 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 not, not like this, not like this. Well, wasn't no, it around, It's though? different. He was around, uh -huh. but it wasn't, it wasn't given to the church to dwell inside of us as temples of God. It was only given to prophets, certain specially called people. It wasn't given to the church. That's the thing. We believe that the Spirit, of the, the Holy Spirit actually is angel. Oh, yeah, see, that's not biblical that's at all, man. No way. That is, that is. <laughs> no way. No way, man. Yeah. Now, the Holy Spirit indwells a angel Gabriel. Yeah. But he's not the Holy Spirit. He's definitely not. He's a created being. Angel Gabriel is. Anyway, you were saying, was, Selah means a Here, I'll show you. Right. It means a pause. Uh, see? It's a musical term showing ac ac accentuation, pause, or interruption. That's, okay. that's just a word. It's not, it does, you can't correlate it to like, in Salah, you know. No, you thought Salah? Whatever, whatever, oh, no, 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 whatever. No, no, no. It, but that's all Salah, it is. Salah is, actual, it's actually a, a it, place in Medina. Right, no, it, this, no, it's, it's just to lift up, to exalt. It's like a musical pause. Right. When you're, because these were songs, they weren't, they weren't just words, they were songs. Yeah. And so there would be a pause there, to worship the Lord. That's basically what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that is that it in Psalm 84 that you were as looking they for? they passed through the Valley of Becca, right? Oh yeah, where's the Valley of Becca? What verse is that? Verse six. They make it a, they mm -hmm. make it a spring. The early rain also covers it with pools. Okay. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears in Zion before God, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I think in some other version, it actually translates some words to pilgrimage, right? In the Valley of Becca, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Weeping. Translated as weeping. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, in the Quran, there is a verse, right? Talking about how... Abraham, you know, started the, 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 the base for Mecca, okay. right? And he considered, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about how it was the first house of worship, 
right? And there is a guidance for mankind. Uh -huh. And that's the valley of Becca. And that's Becca. Oh. Becca okay. is basically where 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 the, 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 the mosque that Abraham started, right? Was built. Yeah. And Mecca is the whole city. Okay. All the outskirts. That that's what they claim. Which I don't believe. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe. I mean, that. you know, you know, I'm just yeah. sharing information. Yeah, yeah. I'm not here to, you know. No, it's okay. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just telling you, I, I don't believe that. I got you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like, there are some similarities. There, are, there are some, some, some things that you could say. Wow, this is interesting. But from my side, from my perspective, I believe that Angel Gabriel came to Jesus and he, you know, preached or, or, or recited the, 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 the gospel to him. We believe that Angel Gabriel went to Moses and did the same thing. We believe that Angel Gabriel came to Muhammad and did the same thing. But we believe that you know some books got al uh, altered with. Yeah, I know. Over time and. Um, what was your name again? Muhammad. I I'm Adam. Adam. Um, the only thing I can encourage you as we leave. Yeah. You see a foundational difference between yeah. the Quran and the and the Bible. Definitely in creed. So so Jesus being the Son of God, you say he's not. Yeah. My only encouragement is to research that out. In yeah. the Bible, the, the, because that's never been corrupted, that's never been changed. That's the thing, that's, bro. that's never, yeah. I mean, and you can, you can historically verify that. And so, personally me, again, I go back to the analogy of who do you want writing a story of your life? I want those that followed me, heard me, watched me do miracles, all those things, rather than a man 600 years later. But I'm not interested in a story of right. a person. But, but to me, truth, it's suspect. You know? To me, it's suspect that one man, it's just like Joseph Smith, same thing. Joseph Smith had a vision of Moroni, and he wrote down the whole Book of Mormon that they go by, right? It, yeah. and, and it's always one man. Yeah. And to me, when one man does something, right. it's a lot easier to lie than multitude, multitudes of witnesses. Right. You know what I'm saying? I uh, think the other way around. 40. When you have 30 I feel like people, when you have a lot of people, yeah, it, 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 might, it might lead not, to... Not to when they're in ge different geographical locations over different points of history. There's no way. No, and and if you... No, no, Definitely. that's that's just but a have, that's just have, an arbitrary claim, though. When you actually study that out in the is Bible, an arbitrary claim to say what you're saying, the opposite. Because because he says that God has no son, and the Bible is very clear that he does, Old and New Testament. Okay, but to us, we so, say that the Bible's been changed. Right, but I've never seen any evidence that that's been taken out of the Bible ever. And until somebody shows me evidence of that, or that it has been changed, and when it has, you know, then the I have to, I, I have to. Bible? I don't, I don't, I think John MacArthur's a heretic. Really? Mm -hmm. You think he's... Yeah, I don't, I don't, that, he's, he's more yeah. reformed Baptist Calvinist. I got you. I've heard him, I think, I think it was him who said you could take the mark of the beast and yeah. still be saved. Yeah. That's totally false. Yeah. Among well, other things, I don't, I don't... Well, there's differences between, you know, um, a lot of sects in the Oh, for Christian sure. Christian. There's, there's even, there's heresies in, in quote-unquote Christian circles. Right. But there is a truth that you can find yeah. when, when the Bible's... What, uh, we're just believers in the Bible right, and Jesus. Christians. Yeah. You look so familiar. I don't know. Your face is very familiar. I have an identical twin brother. You Do you? Maybe you've seen him, yeah. I don't know, man. You look so familiar. Like, you I knew you church? in the past sometimes. No, church? no I don't. No, we, 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 we don't have a denomination. We just... You guys affiliated believe. with the church in the area? No. No? Mm -mm. Our, our home fellowship is in is, is further south. Wait, so. Georgia, South Georgia? Yeah. 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 What? Near LaGrange. So... Yeah. But hey, Mohammed, it's good talking to you. Likewise. Take care. Um, What's your name? Salah. Salah. So you Omar. left me. Omar. Le you left me with an advice, right? Yeah. I'll go ahead and you know do my best. You know what I'm saying to okay. still carry on conversation okay. with, with fellow Christians. Yeah. But have you ever read the Quran? I've read bits and pieces of parts of it. Okay. That I need to. I would recommend doing so. You I can't get through with, it. Man. You can I've... start with just chapter 19, which is the chapter about Mary. Yeah. Well. You can, you can start with well, that, well, right? She's not and the daughter of Amram. The daughter She's of not the daughter of Imram. Who? Miriam. Doesn't, doesn't say the, in the Quran he's the daughter of Imram. Imran. 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 That's actually Miriam and uh, Moses' sister. But that could. That She's could. the daughter of Amram. A Imran. Uh, Mar Mary, ha Mary doesn't mention her, her dad's name. But I, I, think, I think Muhammad may have been confused between the Miriam of Moses' sister and the yeah. Miriam of Jesus' mother. I mean, Jesus, son of Mary, Mary, we, that's, that, that's how they refer to it in the Quran. Yeah. Allah refers to it in the Quran yeah. throughout the whole Quran. So there's no so, confusion for us, you know what I'm saying? We're, 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 I hear you. We're, we're, we're on the same page, you know? We're on the yeah. same page, right? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> nice talking Take to you, Take care. Also, I'm All right. sure you know this, but Allah just means God. Like, even Arab Christians say Allah. Oh, I know, I know. But 
the, char the, the character of the God of the Quran is different than the character of the God of the Bible, so therefore it's a different God. It's not just the name, it's, 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 it's looking at his, his character, the truths, and all of that. Oh, that's so that's you, really you, you get the difference. Just a way to dis sort of distinguish between the two. The what? I'm sorry. Just to distinguish, you just say for the Quran, Allah, and then for. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I would, I would reject the Quran personally because of the of what's written in it. But right. the the God well, of the you Quran. Read it all. You got to read it all to reject it. You know? so right, read right. Read it all and like, then make a decision. I Anyways, have, man. I, I have pure water. <laughs> I, once you have pure water, there's nothing else you can drink. Good talking to you. Adam. Take care. Have a good one. Take care. Well, amen. That was a great talk. Yeah. And he took a, two Muslim tracks. Cool. Yeah. It's funny because I took these out of my backpack 10 minutes before he came, or 10, 15 minutes before he came over. I was like, I know I'm going to use these today. I don't know where. I took them out so I wouldn't have to dig for them. <laughs> Mary's father's name is Eli. 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 H E L I. Oh, Luke it's three. in Matthew. No, Luke 3. Luke 3. Matthew is his. The son of. Duh. Matthew is Joseph's kid. Oh, why didn't I remember that? <laughs> but they say it's Imran. Yeah, they're wrong. Yeah. But the, the thing I was getting with the pro is like they want to talk about how the Bible's become corrupted, right? Yeah. Well, if the Bible's become corrupted, but it used to be God's word, then why can't the Quran become corrupted? Right. Oh, I should have brought up that point. Is it God's word? How can God's word be corrupt? Man, I always they forget say that it was point. God's word. That's why they're saying it's become corrupted. It used to be God's word. Ah. Uh. Of course, they can't point to any kind of like. Greek manuscripts to show us what the Word of God looked like before it became corrupted. Yeah. No such thing. Man, I should have. I should have. I should have remembered the genealogy there in Luke three. I totally forgot about that. He, he just went to renew his. Ours is up in the container. Okay. I am the lost one, weak and condemned, the one that God wants you to talk to, but you're scared you to offend. And I am the outcast, rejected inside, who I'm looking for answers, but I'm blinded by pride to come out and preach. Preach unto me and tell me the secret to eternity. Be bold and speak and reach out to me. No, I can't save myself, but I want to be free. And there's something inside you I need. Oh, there's something deep.